What's up everybody, welcome to Flagrant, and today we are going to begin with a absolutely phenomenal conspiracy that I heard over the weekend from the good folks over there at Ninjas or Butterflies, they came to the show in Jacksonville, man. Oh, fire. And we were chopping it up backstage in the green room. I get them all sitting down, I'm like, I need some heat. Don't give me these like B or C level conspiracies, I need yeah, the, yeah. the number one shit right now. He goes, uh, okay, you've been hearing a lot about the Boeing planes falling apart, yeah. doors falling off, the planes aren't working, the whistleblower that might have got murked, and the public has been almost desensitized to Boeing planes falling apart. When I'm in a plane flying right now, I'm like, is this Boeing? Like, I'm concerned. And if a Boeing plane does fall apart, that wouldn't blow my mind. Well, you know whose jet happens to be a Boeing? Take a wild guess. Mm, I don't. Trump? That's how they get them out of here. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they can't, if they, that's what he said. I was like, yo! Because if, if, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. God forbid but, we lose the great one. God, God, God forbid, forbid we lose the, great the next press, you know? <laughs> but, but if, for example, Trump's plane went down and it was a Boeing, people wouldn't immediately go, oh, they killed him. They would go, of course it did, it's a Boeing. These planes are going down nonstop. Yeah. So they are they inflating the fact that these Boeing planes are falling apart? Are Boeing planes fall, falling apart more than Airbus? We don't even know. We just right now expect Boeing to fall the fuck apart. Mm, this fuck. And if they can't get him out of here and it looks like he's gonna win the election, he has to fly to Iowa or something, plane goes down, see you later, Trump. We blame Boeing. Wow. That's he. Admit that's he. No, listen. <laughs> can I, Here's can the I, thing about. Let me add. Let me. Yeah. Didn't Boeing get bailed out back in the day? So the government could be like, "Hey, we bailed you, you always the fuck want. out. You got to bail us out. You're gonna take a little hit, but yeah. we already gave you your money." Yeah. This is the beautiful thing about Bo about uh, conspiracy theories is it's basically it's comedy without humor. <laughs> but it's connecting two things that definitely have nothing to do yeah, with one yeah, another yeah. and making it seem as if they do. And you're like, oh my God. And the pressure is off to be funny. You just have to make it somewhat logical. Okay. Yeah. Um, listen, guys, what else is going on in the world? We got abortion. They're taking yep. it away in Arizona. Yep. Like, yep. what's what's the vibe? So Arizona had a law in 1864 okay. that abortion was illegal, no exceptions for incest or at any time from the moment of conception and the only exception that was allowed is if the mother's life is in danger. This law is from like 60 years before Arizona was even a state. I think 1912, Arizona became a state. So it's an old law That's that great. also to be, to give context, I don't know how much, but, uh, back then, moment of conception, they found out much later. They didn't have the technology that we have now to find out you pee on a stick and then you find out Got three it. weeks in. So that's, that's one. So a month, they find out a month. Yeah, I heard maybe even later. I think I heard a couple months, but yeah. Well, if you miss a period. period, maybe, yeah, but yeah. You could presume. So that law was, uh, there was an injunction on that law when Roe versus Wade passed, meaning this law is on pause. Yeah. So 1977, whenever Roe versus Wade got passed, then that law, there's an injunction. And then mm -hmm. since then, pro-life groups have kind of been working to uh, chip away at abortion. Right. And then I think in 2002, they passed a 15 week ban. Yeah. So you can't get an abortion after 15 weeks. Uh, I don't, I think there was exceptions for rape and incest. I don't remember that part exactly. Right. But then this Roe gets overturned with Donald Trump who said, I'm going to overturn Roe versus Wade. I think it should be up to the states. That's what he has said since 2016. Right. He didn't flip flop on this. Since 2016, this should be a state's rights issue. We want to overturn Roe. I will put pro-life judges in the Supreme Court so that we can overturn Roe versus Wade and it can be a state's rights issue. Mm -hmm. Then in 2021 or 2022, Arizona passes a law uh, that says abortion is illegal if like the child has like a genetic defect or oh, you, can't, wow. you can't, and then also it gives human rights to fertilized embryos, eggs, fetuses, like from that moment it's fertilized, this is a human life. From so, fertilization? From fertilization, from fertilized eggs, embryos, fetuses. So. I believe, yeah, same thing. I'm just spit regurgitating what I read, but also yeah. seems like the same thing logically. So that law, I think- The, the re reason why I say that is because from fertilization to the embryonic stage, a bunch of shit needs to happen where you lose a lot of eggs. Yeah. So that's why it's difficult for the fertility clinics to stay open if they're held responsible for those lives. And I think that's why it's a tricky thing for them. Yeah. It's like, it says fertilized eggs and embryos, which again, the would, fetus is very different than It would basically cause the fertilization clinics to close down because they don't want to hold the liability of 75% of your uh, eggs. Oh yeah, and they're liable for all those deaths. Exactly. Okay, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's multiple stages that these fertilized eggs go through before you can implant them. Right. And through each stage, you, you, some people lose up to like 50%. Okay. So if the clinic is held responsible since each fertilized egg is a life, right. they'll go, 
well, I, nobody's going to insure this if we're held responsible yeah, 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 as yeah. if like we actually killed right. one of these fertilized eggs. Yeah. So in a way, the law gets rid of fertility clinics. Right. Yeah. Oof, that's yeah. tricky. Okay, go on. Then the Supreme Court makes a ruling that says that 1864 law actually has precedent over all other abortion laws over Roe versus Wade, over the 2002 wow. 15-week abortion wow. uh, ban. So from now on, from the moment of conception, no exceptions for Oh, so it's like illegal, illegal. Illegal, unless the mother's life is in danger. Now, Trump, and this could be a very smart pivot, oh, or it could be what he meant the, the whole time. That's the House of Dragons rule, where it's like, basically, if the baby's going to kill the mom, yeah. you can make a choice. Yes. Mm. Got it. Okay. okay yeah, go then on. you can do it, yeah, which yeah. makes complete sense. Mm-hmm. Now, Trump, again, maybe this is what he always meant, or yeah. maybe it's a very smart pivot. He said, hey, when I said states' rights... I meant the citizens of the state should be allowed to vote on it. Arizona went too far because the Supreme Court ruled on something and didn't put it in the people's hands. Mm. This is an Arizona Supreme Court ruling. I think that's fair. Which makes sense. Yeah, now, it could be the, a very smart pivot of like... Especially the judges are not appointed by the people. So it's not going to be reflective of the democratic yeah, process. Yes. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Now, maybe when he said states' rights, he was saying in 2016, maybe what he was selling is by any means necessary up to the state. Maybe that's what he... And it should but, be able to be changed by the state. If the change, state wants to change, then that law should yeah. change. And if I had to guess, Arizonians, I think they want to change that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knowing a couple of Arizonians, yeah. Yeah, I think they yeah. want I think yeah. they want the scoops. Mm-hmm. So I, the reason this has become such a touch point is because Arizona is the biggest swing state that has such an intense ban. I think Florida has passed and Georgia... Uh, Florida is going to pass on May 1st in force and Georgia has passed six-week abortion bans. So anything after six weeks? Yeah, and I believe... That's snug, bro. bro. That's snug. It's very snug. That's snug. Because your period can be a little late, like... Yeah. You could also get it right after your period, so it's up to like seven or eight that it takes to sort of kick in and notice. Yeah, that's snug. And... That's snug. They were good with that little 15 week or whatever they had. 15 week seems reasonable. Right? Why do they they complain about that? I don't know. You should know by then, yo. I'm sorry. If you don't know by then... Yeah, no, 15 weeks seems very reasonable 15 to weeks? I think most people would find 15 weeks reasonable, and I think that's what Trump wants to make. He's saying, I want to make that the national law of 15 weeks, which seems reasonable. You can even bring it down. No, that, again, that's... You can bring it down. <laughs> we can bring it down. Why? I'm just saying, we could. Here's we what can I will say. And this we is, could, but like you should know. Like yeah, There are people who... like they also don't. also a tough decision for people to make. So sometimes yeah. you need a little time to yeah. think it over. You might have a vacation plan. You don't know if it's going to happen. Can you be honest? 15 minutes yeah. is a lot of time to think That's it over. a lot of time. Sleep I on mean. it. A sleep. That's yeah. a lot of time. People don't say sleep on it. For, hey, hey, Alex, <laughs> sleep on this decision for the next 105 days. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody does that. Right. Sleep on it 105 so, times. 105 you, days yeah, 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 is okay. crazy. Matt, put it like that. You put it Thank God I got the math right. I just had to reconfirm it 105 days is crazy. Yeah. But you don't You don't even know until day four. 40. So now that's shrunk to really 60 days. <laughs> yeah, sleep on, sleep on 65, <laughs> 65 days, days is yeah. crazy. Yeah. So I think 15. You really need 30 days. You really need 30. It's like a refund at Best Buy or something. You know, yeah, no, yeah. sorry. You need 30 after, after the initial yeah, 40. Yeah. 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 You really need a good 70 <laughs> days. <laughs> like if, we're, if we're being honest, <laughs> if we're man. being honest, you need seven. You should be able to figure it out within 70. 10 weeks. That's it. Look at your man. Do we got this? No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think 15 weeks seems reasonable. I think 10 weeks and then seems reasonable. Obviously, for uh, incest. Yeah, so there's no exceptions for incest i don't believe florida georgia there's 14 states yeah, incest that have, and rape, you gotta let here's them. what's very funny mississippi makes an exception for rape, but not incest that's far like you're really playing into the that's stereotype far. of your state that's far. when you're like well, incest that could be love that's, you know what I mean? far. No, that's, that's so funny. i like that know your know your brand yeah. <laughs> know your brand i like that, that a lot a funny thing is that true that's really true yeah. no exception for uh, no exception for incest exception for rape. do you, you have, have to prove it's incest like, could you just go in and be like... But that's what's funny is there's so much incest that not that's not right for them, they can't bundle it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, most of the states, it's like, a, it's like, you know, getting your TV and internet yeah, the same package. Yeah. It's the same. Most, most states are probably just like, incest is always right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we could just put... Yes. <laughs> and then somebody had to go, I think we got to put incest as well. Because yeah. there's some consensuals out yeah, there that yeah. want to get rid of it. Yeah, it is weird you have to put both. You know what I mean? It should just be 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that falls under the umbrella. You know what the worst part about it is? The incest. You're like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's the right part. Oh, part. yeah. But <laughs> oh, <this> brother. <laughs> ooh, brother. What, what do brother, you Brother, ooh. <laughs> do you know that? No. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's <laughs> amazing. Uh, Shout out to Grant. <laughs> brother, ooh. <laughs> brother, ooh. This is. Okay, so. What's so this is kind of, I think Democrats only hope to really win the election because they're all saying this is Trump's fault. Even if Trump didn't push for this, he repealed Roe versus Wade. Yeah. He put this in the state's hands. This is what happens under Republican rule. Here's the thing. The, from what my experience in Arizona, <laughs> they are like gun Republicans. Yeah. In that they're like, Hey, we want freedom to have our guns. We want freedom. I don't even know if they care that much about like the government encroaching on their businesses and that kind of shit. Like, I don't even know if they care that much. I think they're just like, hey, we like guns. Kind of libertarian vibes. Yeah, it's a little bit more like even to choose to live out there in the desert, you're kind of like off the grid. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you're they're trying to abort themselves a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that that extends to, I don't think there's like religious conservative. So what they're trying to do is get it put on the ballot. And if it gets put on the ballot, it will get voted down. In a heartbeat. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there are people who are trying to block it from getting put on the ballot on the conservative side. And this is where Alex was saying it's kind of fracturing the conservative party. Conservative party is getting more and more pro-choice and less and less like ardently pro-life. So now you got these guys though who are like, no, nah, I did vote for this Republican guy or Trump or whoever because I thought you were going to outlaw abortion. I'm a single issue voter. It's the only fucking thing that matters to me. Now I feel very betrayed that you're mm -hmm. suddenly backtracking and like, you might not feel it with Trump, but Mitch McConnell was like, I haven't seen anything on this ruling. I don't know what's going on. Like, what a fucking non-answer that was. So you're looking at all of your leaders who you believed in, and you might feel a way. And now there's this kind of fracture, and this issue is so polarizing and such a single issue thing. Hmm. I will vote based on this one thing, that there does seem to be a splinter in the Republican Party. Wow. And this is the only chance this Democratic Party has to win, I think. Because uh. they're so fucking weak, and they don't stand on anything. But what I can tell you is, you don't want that. And that's why it's becoming such a touch point and such a media issue. So what do we General, think? Sorry, go, go. The attorney general also said, I'm not prosecuting anybody. I'm not prosecuting a patient or a provider under this draconian law, she called it. You, you're like, so good at this. You know so much shit. I, when uh, you apply yourself, you fucking know. <laughs> I, uh, you're we'll like forget. really good at that. I will forget all of this within 48 but hours. None of that promise. matters because yeah. you know it now. Yeah. 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 We recorded it. It was good fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just know all these things. You said Mitch McConnell. I mean, I tuned out, but you fucking got it. Like... <laughs> Like, it was incredible. As long you, as y'all think I know something. Yeah, yeah, you do know it. Know. You know all this. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. I'm like blown away. Yes. Did 1864 and all this other shit. This is incredible. <laughs> I had a year wrong, actually, initially. Somebody, what, was the, what was the right year? I thought it was 1856 and it was 1864. I just re-looked it up, thank God. No, you said 1864. Yeah, I know. But before in the bathroom break, I was checking my notes and I was like, <laughs> hey, hey, we don't know yeah, about the bathroom break. We know what you on. deliver to the right, people. You're right, you're right, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, bro, this is the incredible. Your deliveries, right. Yo, yeah. kill that shit. 70 right? days. Shut up and make some drums. <laughs> <laughs> I think 70 days is it. 70 day abortion yeah. ban, very reasonable. Al, why, why so much? What's Chilling. the latest one you did, yo? <laughs> <laughs> yo, what was your latest? <laughs> yo, <laughs> so real yo, talk, yo. As, as I was researching it, I was like, Al should have taken this guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a pill. Nah. I didn't know there's a pill you could yeah, take. Yeah. And then I was like, that's probably how he got it every time. For how many, uh, for how many days? The pill is crazy. <laughs> wait, why is it? Wait, 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 wait. It basically makes their body go through pregnancy, like it forces the contractions. And so it's a painful process. Definitely get the nice little vacuum, scoop, scoop. Oy. But that, that's most though. I think most are uh, chemical abortions. Yeah, yeah, but that's the worst one. Like it's mm. better to go for the nice little vacuum. Yo, when you talk about it, like how they get it out of there, it feels like murder. <laughs> nah, <laughs> doesn't it? When off. you talk about how they get it what out of there. What are you talking about? You got a mass. Like, Can we have you know, We got to check if it's banana. <laughs> Bill Maher's getting killed for this. Vacuum. Yeah. Chemical. Yeah. Like it just feels they like you're killing something. First. Bill Maher's getting it. killed for this. He was What's like, take? he's like, yo, honestly, the Republicans were like 15 week ban. Y'all don't make any logical sense to me. The guys who make sense to me logically are like life begins at conception. This is murder. Mm -hmm. I do believe it's murder. I'm okay with it being murder. Yeah. And then he says a joke thing that like, I love there's soccer. Eight soccer people yeah, soccer jumped on. He's like, there's 8 billion people in the world. We could, we could lose a few. And I think soccer kind of jumped on that, which I think 
to give Bill more grace, he's just trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. I kind of look at it like, yeah, it is murder. I just think it's euthanasia as opposed to like, you know, when you kill somebody who's like terminally ill, mm -hmm. that life doesn't, if your mom doesn't want you 14 weeks in, if she's been going through pregnancy for 14, 15 weeks and is still like, I don't want this motherfucker. I have doubts that that baby will have a good quality of life. Maybe we better to just, for all parties involved in society at large. Yo, you know how like, yep. if like, if you were on steroids, you get an asterisk on your home runs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is Can't this be like murder with an asterisk? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> it's not full murder. I, I think that's how God looks at it. Like you didn't murder a full person. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Like if you murdered, like, like let's say there was somebody who was like, they're they're missing like half their body, right? <laughs> okay, wait. Okay. Oh, that's not the example. Just, no, no, no. no. <laughs> this will be good. This will be, this that's will be not good. The example. Listen. So we take a you just the, get half the time. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Let's say someone's missing half their body, right? And like you, you chopped in like what you were accused of, right? Is like chopping up their body into pieces and like putting it into a refrigerator, and then like it came out. It was only half the body, yeah. right? Mini fridge. Yeah. yeah, it would be a one, a smaller fridge, but you'd also be like, all right, he didn't chop up the whole body. Like, it was two chops. <laughs> it wasn't even that many chops when you think about it, right? So it was, it was like you had to do what you had to do. What I'm trying to say is it's not a full, it's not full murder. Do mm. you know what I mean? <laughs> like, full murder. And also, like, after a certain age, like, if you're, like, 85... Yeah, that's the example. I would, yeah, if you kill someone that's like 109. Is that full murder? <laughs> or is that an asterisk? Yeah. Crazy. Are you Barry Bonds in it a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just let's just talk it out. I could be wrong, but let's just talk it out. Or on the deathbed. <laughs> yeah. On the deathbed. You know, and you pull the plug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they're like, yo, you got a day left. That's full murder? Not even remotely murder. But it's, it is. You got a day left. You pulled the plug. You had a day. You had 24 more hours. Is that murder? No. It doesn't work like that. How does it work? <laughs> like When they're hooked up to the machine, they can stay alive just based on the machine. That's so what I'm saying. They have as many days as they want left. Nope. Not this situation. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Not this Give me a solution yeah. now. Yo, Give saved me a by solution. the bell. What about that? Saved by the bell. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to throw it out there. Listen, what about saved by the bell, Al? So check it, right? Saved by the bell is this. We're fighting, right? All right. I, just so that you feel comfortable, and your ego isn't in Bruce, you hit me, right? Because yeah, we know. That was yeah. condescending. I know. That was <laughs> condescending. Well, yeah, if yeah. I was going to let him hit me, I had to be condescending first. Okay. <laughs> or okay. I, or yeah. I'm very kind and I knock him out. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one or the other. I'm still having an ego, too. You know? yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah, he, so, would, he would blow his shoulder out if he yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, better if I did. We couldn't even <laughs> get into it. I knew we couldn't what even is get into it. The hypothetical can't even get there because Al and I can't agree who we're going to fight. Is it murder? <laughs> okay, okay, so so let's say hypothetical, we're fighting, you knock me out, right? But the the round ends before the 10 second count. So I'm saved by the bell. <laughs> Hold on now. Why Hold did you on. say Max Gaethje? This Hold just happened. Now. This no, just because happened. It, he wasn't. Nah, this he is the got opposite. Out uh, I see, I see, I see. I'm saved uh, I see. by the bell. I see, I see. Okay, I see. Mark? I now understand. Saved by the bell. Boxing, boxing. <laughs> All right? How does that work for what we're talking about? <laughs> I think you got knocked out, dude. Yeah. So what? But, but did I? Yeah. Did I? I don't know yes. if you did. No, technically I don't know if I did. Technically, I didn't. I think I'm on to 10 weeks right now. I think I'm right. <laughs> Hold on. I think I'm ten right. 10 weeks makes mad sense. Yeah. No. Ten he's weeks. saying it's still partial murder. No, we're not. I'm With saying you, saved by the bell. Be very no, about I'm saying I'm saying the murderer got saved by the bell. Oh, yeah, okay. the yeah. murderer got saved so by the murder. bell. It's not this is Zach Morris murder. Yeah, this yeah. is why. Oh my God, I threw this out there, having thinking that this wasn't going to work, and we were going to like retrofit it, but it kind of does work. You're saved by the bell, right? Mm -hmm. You, as the murderer, get saved by the bell when you do it at ten weeks. You don't know if that pregnancy would make it all the way. That's mm -hmm. true. So technically. Yeah, you are saved by the bell as a murderer. We mm -hmm. can't call you a murderer because we don't know if you would have stayed knocked out or not. Mm -hmm. You are saved by the bell. Ten weeks. Saved yeah. by the bell. I like ten weeks. Son, <laughs> whoa, whoa, not ten. Ten, ten, ten. <laughs> Wait, what is ten? Seventy days? Seventy yeah. days. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, seven, seventy days is tight. Yeah. No, 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 no. You're right. Seventy days is fine. Yeah. I was thinking when you said ten weeks, it was six. 
but it's no, not. No, no. It's Henry, two and a half months. Yeah. yeah. One month you miss your period. Okay, maybe you're, you're going to Vegas. You're having some fun. Maybe you didn't have a lot of carbs. Yeah. Something's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Two months you don't get a period. You're gonna start wondering. Hmm. Two months, one week, you should be like, all right, pregnancy test. Now you got seven days. That's all. That's all. It's about. <laughs> I think we might need a little longer. <laughs> That's what I'm That's what I'm That's what I'm hold on, hold on. We might need a little longer. Because the first month is a mulligan. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what that if is? If you haven't had your period in six weeks, I do know that, thank God. <laughs> if you haven't had your period in six weeks, you're not going to be like, hey, I might be pregnant. No girl's going to be like, I should take a test. Six no, because they, 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 they didn't eat that week. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes their periods don't come. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, dead ass, their periods don't come. But they sometimes. could take a pregnancy test anyway. Yeah. But they wouldn't do it. Why would they? Because they missed their period. Because it's a 10 week abortion ban. Son, yeah, that's but... important. But you don't take pregnancy tests for the same reason we don't take um, an STD test. You don't want to find out? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, hey, too this, busy having this fun. This herpes is forming. <laughs> I'm telling you, test or not. But think about it. For that two months, they're too busy having fun because you don't have any period during that time where she's a little, you know. She outside. Yeah, but so she's been nutted in. all happy. She's been nutted in multiple times. She don't even know she's been nutted in. She was partying. Yeah. She didn't know. It was like, oh, they was fucking like whatever. It's fuck. Freak off. <laughs> it's fuck time. It's a freak off. It's a ditty party. Yeah. He was getting thrown around. So how many weeks do you think they need? Say again? How many weeks do you think they need? I, let's let's talk it out because now we know 70 is really too little. It's too little. Based on the psychology of a whore. <laughs> yeah. Think about it. You getting thrown around like a trout at a fish market in Seattle. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't know who's nutted in you or who isn't. Uh -huh. Right? You come 70 days, 70 days later, you're like, I should get a pregnancy test. Or 60 days later. Yeah. 60 days plus seven. 67 mm -hmm. days later, you yeah. get, I should take a mm -hmm. pregnancy test. You take a pregnancy test, oh shit, you're pregnant. Damn. Mm. You, got you don't know if the guy who nutted in you was rich or not. You got to figure yeah, that you out. Look into it. You can't figure that out in yeah. three days. What if he's in a draft class and you don't know if he's about to go to the league? You're going to abort a, a future NBA prospect? But the draft is in three months. You got to wait. Mm, so sorry. now, based on this logic, you gotta get, you gotta go to the combine. You gotta see the vertical. You gotta see the forty. You gotta see what type of draft prospect this guy is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he could go first round lottery pick, yep, keeping it. Let it grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let let it grow. grow. <laughs> I'm telling you. But you might need three more months. So oh, now, now we're at eight hold on, months. Hold on, hold on. We're not at eight. 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 We are at 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay. We know that you're not really checking to see if you're pregnant or not until day how many 67. weeks? Six, <laughs> day 67. Day 67. Yeah. Okay. How many days you need to decide if the guy who nutted in you is going to be rich or is rich? It depends. I would say if we're just going to be fair and let's err on the side of comfort here, mm -hmm. three weeks. That puts us at... How many weeks? 88 days. Depends on the time of year, too. That's is, my point. What yeah. about 12 and a half weeks? Yeah. Uh, I, we, gotta, we gotta see a tax return before. Uh, taxes like, are very yeah. important. The tax is a stressful time. We can mm -hmm. push it back a period even more. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking three months is safe. I'm thinking three months is safe. 12 weeks or three months? Those could be different. You're, you know what? You're fucking right. That's an actually really important thing that I learned after having a kid. Yeah. The reason they say the week shit is because three months is not the same yeah. as 12 weeks. Mm. Yeah. You're 100% right. Give them the months. Three months. No, we'll do weeks. Weeks, 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 weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, weeks, yeah. weeks, weeks. Could be a short month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a 12 week abortion, man. 12 weeks. Now, here's the thing you're going to want an extra week. Because yeah. everyone procrastinates. Everybody procrastinates. Also, you got to find your right doctor. Mm -hmm. You got to find your right clinic. Mm -hmm. You got to get the guy to pay for yeah. it. Which you might not want to pay Which for it. Which vacuum are you using? Which vacuum are you going to use? Mm -hmm. Now we're at 12. I so, might want to have a little fun. So 13, like, I can't get pregnant week. again. You might as well get nutted in. Yeah. You can't get pregnant again. Yeah. That's yeah. A 13 lot. week abortion ban? Yeah. But now you're at 13. So so if you're at 13, it's bad luck. 13 is bad luck. So 14 week abortion ban. I think 14. Is a good number. 14 week abortion yeah. ban. Okay. 
Okay. They might have thrown all this through, and the 15 might have been. The 15 is safe for I everybody. Think, I, think, I think 15 is safe for everybody. really includes holidays. Okay. Like These politicians be doing stuff. See, we, and, we, and we talk doers. all this shit. They, they doers. are doers. Come they on, make a difference. Come and we on. talk all this shit, okay, when we just need to shut our mouths yeah. and enjoy our rap beef. All we doing is complaining. So mm. complaining. 15 week abortion ban. 15 weeks. Okay. What? What do you think about it? When they made that rule about the abortion back in the day in 1864, there wasn't shit to do but get pregnant for a mm, woman. That's, mm. true. that's true. You were uh, acutely aware of what your period was because that was your only entertainment for the month. Mm. You couldn't read. <laughs> that's true. You couldn't ride a horse. Mm. You couldn't do nothing. Make a casserole and wait for that fucking bloody Sunday. <laughs> God damn. What? It's what? Funny. It's funny. You had once a month, you're going to have the strawberry shortcake. <laughs> okay? That once a month, that strawberry shortcake is coming, and that's what you look forward to. Mm -hmm. So, of course, they are aware of it. Mm. These girls now, what are they doing now? Playing Minecraft? Mm. Mm. Right? Minecraft. <laughs> it's a little young. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing then, huh? <laughs> what are these girls doing? <laughs> Fuck, what's that? What's Restaurant the, week? Uh, checkers or some shit. They play checkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Checkers. Chess. Chess, yeah. Yeah. Checkers. Chess. Chess. Yeah. Chess. They play chess. They play chess. Those are good. Chess. With the NBA players, bro, they're playing 4D <laughs> chess. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're plotting, dude. What are you, they're, what they're are you saying? What are you saying? They're playing 4D chess. They're, trying to, get, they're trying to get a kid cooking. You know what I'm saying? Are you saying that they're trying to use these NBA players yeah, that's and great. get pregnant with them? That's what yeah. you're trying to say, accuse women of doing? I mean, I don't think guys are doing it. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. I don't think guys are fucking oh. NBA players trying to get pregnant, in my experience. Yo, it's, it's almost primarily women. Oh, no. Listen, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to throw a wrench into this like plan that we've devised here, right. but I, I will throw one more suggestion. The amount of time that you have is dependent on the uh, financial situation you're in. Mm. So... If you make over a quarter million dollars a year, yeah, you can. You have eight months to decide. Okay. <laughs> what? I thought you were going the other way. So, so thirty-two week abortion man. Yeah, if, thirty-two if, week abortion if, man. If you're a woman, <laughs> thirty-two weeks. Yeah, good. if you're a woman, you're making quarter million dollars. You can you can support the baby on your own. It's not a big deal. Like mm. you you are not dependent on anybody else. Yeah. The only person's life to change is yours. <laughs> mm. You should be entitled up to nine months, to be honest. So 36 weeks. I think 36, 36 weeks. 36 weeks abortion. Now, now, if you have Settle, no... Settle, dust it. Boom. You got no job. Yeah. You a stripper. You know what I mean? You you basically, you get yeah, paid all cash. A job. It is, if your job is all cash. You know, if you get paid <laughs> tips, if you got to iron your money. If you, <laughs> if you got to use an iron for your money. Um, that, you know, this is a different, this is, I think it might be a shorter period. Okay. Okay. And I think that I, I meant to reverse what I just said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the other way around. <laughs> it's all I cool, think we man. solved it, everybody. We I think did. We really solved it. We did. Hell yeah, dude. There's also late delivery, though. So I think we should have like a 40 week abortion. Yeah. 40 weeks, I think. Is 10 good. months. 10 months. <laughs> Yo, that's a good point. What if the baby's late? Yeah. Yeah. So we got to build a pad some time. 40 weeks. 40 week abortion ban. Done and dusted. How long? How far off do you think we are from like? Yeah, we're 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 killing something. We don't know if it's a full human yet, but we're killing something. But we're okay with that. How far off do you think Americans are from that? Yeah, I, I just feel like there's like a what is the term cognitive dissonance or whatever. When it's got a heartbeat, yeah, it's not alive. It's not a life. You guys are all convinced. I just feel like we'd be gaslighting these Christians, man. <laughs> these Christians are like, yo, there's a heartbeat. And then we're like, man, shut up, gay. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah, you they, don't like gays. Shut up. The, the why y'all hate gays so much? Yo, that's. Yo, what you, why don't you watch a priest? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yo, they say shit that is true and it's yeah. so obvious, and we just call them homophobic. And then if you acknowledge it's murder or something, it's like, yo, it's got a heartbeat. So what do you say to that? <laughs> they have nothing. There's no, I've never heard a response I'm saying we got to stop gaslighting the yes. Christians, mm. but we also just have to accept how we kind of feel. Yeah. That's Which, like Louis biz. Like, what do you say? It's, it's, it's killing a baby, yeah. but women should be allowed to kill babies. Yeah. Like, it's like women should be allowed to kill what's inside of them. Yeah. But it is killing. Up to a certain point. I don't think, and I think that they should only be allowed to kill a certain amount of them. That's another thing. Oh, no, this, this is fire. If, this is fire. Let me ask you something now. If you found out a girl had 24 abortions... 
Damn. You gotta take away that right, right? Like nah, there's a number. You got yeah. there is a number. Like an that's advent a, calendar. That's a kink at that point. Now what's yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, you Jeez, into it, bro. <laughs> you really into it. God damn, that's a serial. I'm so like, Baker's dozen. Thirteen. <laughs> so did you, it's like, did you see the trans woman that was trying to get a uterus put in to be the first trans woman to have an abortion. Oh my oh, god. This bitch doing too much. They what? trying to be hated, bro. Well, they trying to be hated. That's kind of fun. They trying to be hated. Why they trying to be hated? Why is that bad? This bitch doing too much. Why? Come on. I mean, it is a lot, right? Why? It's just too much. Why? Why? Nah, if you're going to go, go. <laughs> no, but if, if you're going to go, go. go. Pro-choice and pro-abortion are different things. <laughs> this bitch is pro-abortion. Listen, Alex is proof that you don't have to be a woman to have an abortion. <laughs> 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 that trans dude could have a million yeah. abortions right now. Why the hell oh. does he need to yeah. be inside Trans yeah. rights, bro. <laughs> Al will get them pregnant. <laughs> Yo, imagine getting a uterus put in Getting pregnant to just have an abortion. What a f- What doctor is doing that? What doctor is like, yeah, let's What are you it. even connected nah. to? I don't even know if the power outlets That's work. True. <laughs> yeah, That's true. Yeah. It's like the UCB, what is it called? USB-C? USB-C? Yeah, yeah, it might be. Yeah. <laughs> what is it connecting to? Yeah, I don't know. Right? I don't know what you wired it up. dongle. What, for real, like, we have to, is that even a real thing that they can do? They can put a uterus inside there? I think so. Yeah, we can can you put a uterus on a dolphin? No, let me look. Okay, we're using pig kidneys now, so it's like we can do a lot. But what's a kidney do? Kidney yeah, just, you gotta hook it up though. We mean. got a place for a kidney. So yeah, you just we switch it, it out. from a pig. Oh, uh, and new, it's working. New Delhi so based can... surgeon would soon attempt a uterine transplant on a transgender woman. It hasn't been performed successfully yet, but people for people assigned male at birth. Man, this guy just wanna kill a trans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, That's uh, cat. yeah, That's yeah. Cat, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Cat. yeah. That is funny. That is just, <laughs> that is. Let's funny. be honest about what that was. <laughs> oh, I, I could put a uterus in you. Yeah, yeah. Experimental <laughs> surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it looks like they're trying it. They're trying to make it work. The Life Tour this weekend. We're in Nashville at the Grand Old Opry House. Then we're in Austin at the Moody Center, and then Phoenix. We had a second show at uh, the Arizona Financial Theater, uh, and then. The next time we are doing shows as part of the Life Tour, it will be Madison Square Garden. So, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, it's, it's wild to even say that that is a couple weeks away. The singular goal, dream that I've had in mind since I started comedy. So I, I am uh, in incredibly excited, to say the least, about those shows. And... Uh, I can't wait to see you guys there, and it's going to be special. We're going to make sure it's special. Um, love y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming out and supporting, man. TheAndrewShows.com for tickets. See you out there, the Life Tour. Also, guys, tour dates. This week, I am in Denver tomorrow through Saturday, April 18th through 20th. Also, the 420 show. I'm going to get high at least at the second one, maybe the first one, but that could be a fucking nightmare. So one of those shows, you should definitely buy tickets. Uh, May 10th, Los Angeles. We are fully sold out. We just added a couple more dates. More will come. But May 31st and June 1st, St. Louis, Missouri. June 7th and 8th, Indianapolis. Indiana, June 21st and 22nd, Raleigh, North Carolina, June 28th and 29th, Buffalo. Guys, get your tickets at akashsing.com. And also check out Gasset. We hit 2 million views in a month. That was fire. Thank you guys so much. So appreciate your support. I love y'all. Now let's get back to the show. I looked into this Trump story with the um, with the trial. Trial, yeah. Mm. I, I looked into this story to understand this story. Yeah. After reading... And not only reading, talking it through with someone who has legal expertise, after trying to get to the bottom of it, I realize there's no hope. <laughs> there's no hope. There is no hope for information ever again. <laughs> there's no hope. Okay. First of all, I'm going to go through each one of you and just ask you if you know what the trial's about. Do you know what it's about? Uh, the hush money payment. For Stormy Day. Okay, yeah. so... First of all, we all know Trump's going to, the guy who's probably going to be president is going to trial in our city. You have no fucking clue. <laughs> There's no hope. No, it's okay. Nobody knows. We all don't know. I didn't know the shit you were fucking talking about. I have no clue. When you tell me about the abortion thing, I have no fucking clue. I'll tell you right now. I know what abortion is. Sit them on a cactus. That's all I fucking know. I have nothing. I don't know anything else. Besides that. Okay. Okay? You have never heard Listen, of I... Like dude, it's what they do in Arizona. This is what we're going to have to go back to now that they yeah. made it illegal, it's right? Go on out there in the desert, yeah. find a spiky one, and go for it, right? <laughs> so, I'm looking into this fucking Trump thing, okay? 
Stormy Daniels, I know, okay? This is what I thought it was going into it because I just read headlines and I'm a fucking doofus, right? Mm -hmm. I go, okay, he took money from the the, the campaign uh, funds okay. and then paid it. That's what I thought, right? Because yeah. I'm an idiot, right? Uh, not even what it's about. Okay. Apparently, and I'm gonna have to take out my phone that has notes on it to get through this, I'm sure, but I'll try to do it without. Okay, apparently, apparently, he pays Michael Cohen, who was his personal attorney, uh, $130,000. Michael Cohen sets up a shell company to create separation between Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. The shell company pays Stormy Daniels $130,000. That is hush money. That's, hey, be quiet about, you know, whatever the fuck happened. Don't say some shit, okay? Now, it is a, the reason why this is a big deal for Trump is because it's a felony, right? It is a misdemeanor to falsify your business records. In other words, say that you paid for one thing when it was really for another. Trump said in his records he paid $130,000 for legal services to Michael Cohen. Mm -hmm. The $130,000 from the shell company that Michael Cohen set up went to Stormy Daniels, which would imply that he was falsifying his records. Now, that's just a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. People falsify their business records all the time. It is quite common practice. Maybe people are writing off a fucking meal here and there that's not exactly a business meal. They're writing on. There's that's falsifications. All the, this happens yeah. all the fucking time. Okay. But, but. He's running for president. He's running for president. And, then, and, and this is where it gets even more specific. In order for it to become a felony, you have to falsify your records. There's a couple options where it can be felony. Falsify your records with the hope to conspire to, uh, to, to gain office. So mm. if they can prove that he had falsified his records in hopes to benefit him, for running for office, this is, I think, a New York law, mm -hmm. specifically, I don't know if it's available in other states, then you can go, okay, now it's a felony, and once it's a felony, now we can put five years in prison or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there. It's not only if they can, if they, if, if, if they can prove intent to conspire to run for office and how this would benefit, there's another one where if you, um, Evade tax authorities is obviously a crime, right? So if you're evading tax authorities. So if you're falsifying records, that is a crime. And doing that to evade tax authorities, that is a felony. Now, anytime you would falsify records, it would be to evade yeah. tax authorities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's already going to be a felony. Yeah. So the DA hasn't even said which one it's going to be. He's like, we got something that's a felony. I don't got to tell you, but we got something. Mm. It's, it's an illegal shore. Uh, it's going to make me vote for him. <laughs> That's my take. I, 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 if, if, if researching this and seeing the fucking, and you don't think that there's at least a little bit of a witch hunt, a little bit yeah, of a witch yeah. hunt. We're talking about New York City. Yeah. You can't pay a bitch to shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, you can't pay her from your lawyer. Yeah. Like, what? How, how are we supposed to pay him, Alex? <laughs> how are we supposed to pay him? He used his own personal funds. If he used, he his did own, use his no, own no, personal no. funds. He used um, funds from the the pool that's supposed to be for running. So here's like, my thing: he doesn't like to use his own money for anything. But here's and that's my thing: his fucking downfall. Didn't he use his own money for his campaign? No, but he still got plenty of donations. Sure, sure. But what I'm saying is, can't he say that the one thirty? Came from his own money? No, because it came from the pool. Even if he put his own money into that pool yeah. of money, you can't say it still comes from that pool. From, mm. You can't prove all 100% came to, from Up right to here. right now, all his lawyer fees have been coming from a pool, from donations. He has not paid a single dollar of his own money for any of his legal fees up to date. This guy has no idea what's going on. He you made more him. money after January 6th because they thought they were going to lock him up. So people donated more to him after the campaign uh, than before the campaign. And he's been riding on that money fair, to pay all this. Okay, wow. fair enough, fair enough. What I'm trying to it's say crazy. is- crazy. What I'm trying to say is, it's not your fault for not knowing. Yeah, yeah. This, like, I, I get it. It's really not. It's everything is so, the amount of work that it took to just barely understand and still get it wrong, mm. this topic, yeah, yeah. that's every topic. Yeah. That's everything. The amount of work you had to do last night to just barely scratch the surface of Iran and Israel, not even talking about Iran and Palestine, I mean, Israel and Palestine, just the Nobody, no human being could understand all of this stuff and have friends, a family, <laughs> children, a job. It is a, what, so the, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get at after all this is, 
I completely get why people just go, fuck the truth, I'm picking a side, feed me, feed me the talking points. I'm a liberal, tell me how I should think. I'm a conservative, tell me how I should think. Doing the research, un it's impossible. <laughs> it's literally impossible. Yeah. Like, imagine you work 80 hours a week. <laughs> imagine you work 80 hours a week and you wanna have, you can't, the you truth is family. too hard. You, you have a family. Kids. And you then I gotta family. tell them what to think. Think tell about how, me what to think is I can tell them what to think. Think about how easy it was. Nazis, bad. Great, love mm. it. Americans, good. Love it. <laughs> I'm informed. <laughs> now everybody's bad. <laughs> Everybody's bad now. Everybody's bad. Everybody's a little bad. Everybody's yeah. a little good. Everybody. It is impossible to understand every issue and still be like a decent human being with friends and like enjoy basketball. <laughs> you can't enjoy basketball. You can, honestly, during baseball season, I'll be more informed. The second the NBA playoffs are done, and we're in that like middle time where there's only baseball. Yeah. Summer. The summer. I'm gonna be in the Hamptons. Yeah. I have no <laughs> chance of ever being completely informed again. I can learn one thing a week and I'll figure that one out and then everything else, <sighs> I don't know. I, I What do we do? What do we do? I don't get the part, <laughs> what makes this make you wanna vote for him now? Because they try to do the same thing on Biden. They've been trying to put charges on him. Trying to I think wait a hold on. They've been trying to put charges on Biden? Yes. I'm voting for him. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so Whoever they putting charges on for <laughs> no right. reason, I'm voting for. Vote for uh, both. Yo. Yeah. I got the ballots. Get a mail-in ballot. Get a mail I got the ballots. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do that shit. Right? I'm gonna do that shit. That's fine. Then you vote, but then it's a wash. Yeah, and then nobody can say that I'm anything. People yeah. don't. Do You're that. more American because you crime. voted twice. I voted twice. I care about the this most fucking American. country. Yeah. The most American. I care about it. Two I voted stickers. You got one. Son, Bum, who yeah. if, if who knows everything? And People. the guy you vote for wins. That's fine. Oh, both. If you vote for both, yes. It's fine. Yes. This Play both a, sides, a, never lose. This is bro. voter fraud, right? Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Right now, I'm saying I'm voting for both. Guaranteed, Biden dies next. Next week, Trump's plane crashes, and now I can't vote for no one, and I gotta learn about Kamala. Damn. I gotta learn about new people. RFK, baby. Shout out to RFK. That's the other thing, even the vaccines. Like, I, I've been- I thought we not cutting anything else. <laughs> we're not, so we're not, stop. we're not cutting it. Even the vaccines, I have every reason, even when I was talking to Joe, I have every reason to believe that we should ask questions about the vaccines and researching, and we should, we should. I want to do that but I don't have any concrete proof of the bad shit. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any concrete proof of another alternative, right? So with RFK, like sweet guy, great multimillionaire, can afford to educate his kids in pods, can afford to not put them in preschool, can afford to not put them in daycare, can afford all these things that are luxuries within the vaccine situation. Mm -hmm. The average American, Cannot. Literally, they have to go to work. Mm. They can't say, oh, I'm not gonna vaccinate my kid. And then who watches your kid? Oh, you're just gonna get a, a nanny just for your one kid with your salary that's 50 grand a year while you're working at Walmart? Yeah. Mm. It's not practical. Now, we should ask all the things, 100%. Mm. And it's terrifying. I'm terrified as a father. Genuinely terrified. Mm. Like, you never wanna do anything to your kid that causes harm, and you never wanna not do something to your kid that causes harm. Mm. You, you, you don't yeah, vaccinate, yeah. and then God forbid they get a disease that could have been avoided? Bruh. How could you live with yourself? Bruh. How could you fucking live with yourself? Oof. So you're just, you're terrified. Yeah. But right now, from everything, all the conversations I've heard about the vaccines, there is reason to believe that we should study more, that there might be some negative side effects of these things. Right. Obviously the aluminum inside, right? Uh, but I haven't, there hasn't been enough, unfortunately, research done to prove that they do cause the things that we're worried about, mm -hmm. which is basically some tism, mm -hmm. right? So you're in this middle ground where it's like, you have all the anxiety yeah. and none of and the, the confirmation. Yeah. Mm. And there's so many people who probably feel that, but they don't have the money to live, 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 lead the life of somebody who wants to be completely skeptical. Yeah. It's not cheap. Yeah. You can't put your kid in a fucking daycare. If they don't have it, and this religious exemption shit, they don't give a fuck. Nope. You want to put them in private school? The private school goes, yo, kick rocks, I don't give a fuck. Yep. These are the rules. So what, only the rich don't get vaccinated? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You could have a coworker take the shots for you. <laughs> say what, and even homeschool, like not everybody can afford to have a parent stay home. Mm -hmm. That's a luxury too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it is a- Daycare is expensive, home care is- Son, crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like, yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you're just, we're in this like weird amorphous time where like, yes, it's great that we're asking questions about everything. I'm glad we're asking questions about everything. I have a lot of questions, mm -hmm. but we're also in a time where now that we're asking questions about everything and it's revealing the cracks and everything. Yeah. We have no faith in a single system. Yeah. No faith in government. I have no faith where my taxes go. I don't know what the military industrial complex are doing with the fucking money. I thought all the money was going to Ukraine until last month. Now I realize <laughs> it's staying here. It's going to Raytheon. How, how is it that I'm 40 years old and I'm learning that everything I know is false every day? <laughs> Give me rap beef. Thank God. Thank God, Kendrick. Kendrick and Drake don't even want to do this. Rick Ross don't even want to do this. Mm. They're doing it for us. Yeah. Yes. These girls taking dick from all three of them are doing it for us. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out to the homies. Thank you. Yeah. And then don't ask for fucking hush money like Stormy. <laughs> Shut your mouth and let the beef prevail. <laughs> yeah. Like bank different politicians yeah. to tell them about Trump. Thank you. Yeah, that we're talking. Do NDAs mean anything these days, man? Dude, I don't know. Crazy. Now that bothers me for real. Yeah, that's That bothers crazy. me for real. That really, come on. <laughs> Yeah. Do, do, do you guys feel at all what I just said? Yes. Is that, yeah. Yes. I look at the 90s as being such a happy time. I'm sure it wasn't, but we just didn't know anything. We yeah. knew not, ignorance and is bliss. And it was awesome. It ignorance was is awesome. bliss. And, and, and don't get me wrong. It's good we're talking about these things. There was a time where ignorance was bliss about what was going on with black people. Then Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote a book and people were like, oh, slaves got it bad? Yeah. <laughs> they literally were reading Uncle Tom's Cabin like, wait, slaves don't like it? I thought they like it. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, they're upset feeling? about this? Yeah. They yeah. feel like, what are they, people? They could speak English. Yeah. Like they had no fucking clue. A lot of people up north. Yeah. So it's like, it's good we ask questions. It's good we challenge systems. That being said, there is a, there is a cost to it. Yeah. And the cost is the anxiety of not knowing anything. OJ gave us a year of news coverage oh. to not think about real issues. Rest in peace. Shouts to OJ. Rest in peace. Bro. Shouts to OJ. Rest in peace. The yo, yo. Boy. <laughs> the real talk. Boy. We need it. We need a break. We need. We need like. We need seasons, bro. How long is the NBA season? Seven, eight months, I think. Mm -hmm. God damn. What's the shorter one? WNBA. <laughs> <laughs> NFL. NFL. Four months. Okay. NFL. Four. We need an NFL season for learning. Four months of the year, we're gonna go in. We're gonna learn about Israel, Palestine. We're gonna learn about everything. We're gonna know, we're gonna figure it all out, yeah. okay? We're gonna learn about Hamas' perspective. We're gonna learn Israel's perspective. We're gonna learn about the whole history. We're gonna learn about everything, okay? And then once the Super Bowl is over, hey, y'all gotta put that shit on pause for a little bit. We need to go listen to some rat beef, okay? We cannot be learning shit all year. We got four months. He had to research one story. <laughs> Yo, you know the crazy thing? You know the crazy thing? I didn't even have to research it. This is F.A. telling me to research. <laughs> son, 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 son. And I know it's not me, because I got a text from Mark. When he had, I got a text from Mark last night. This is my text from, this is my text from Mark last night at 3.45 a.m. <laughs> Mark's, Mark's job is to go research the Israel-Iran war. Mark at 3.45 a.m. text me, this Israel-Iran stuff runs deep. <laughs> it does. It does. Oh, my God. <laughs> I texted Mark last night. Uh, I said, I feel like we're in college again. I'm, I'm researching in the library. Yeah. 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 I also remembered why I wasn't a doctor when I had to research this topic. The number of fucking times I got distracted was unbelievable. I, just, oh, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Uh, so I started I, watching Watch YouTube. It was just a whole... Oh, yeah, yeah, then you get distracted. Yeah, yeah. Then you're just scrolling because you're trying you, to break it. Yeah. I remember the kids who became doctors would lock in for like six hours mm. I'm sitting there for 12 hours trying to research one fucking thing and I keep getting distracted. You might, you might have HD, bro. Yeah. You might have fucking ADHD. I might have the hood. Yeah, bro. I might have the hood. <laughs> you might have it, dude. Yeah, but thank here's God the, thing. the explanation we, at least. We you need had a those people. Adderall, you would have been a doctor right yeah. now. Yeah, for real. So here's the thing. I'm taking Adderall, right? Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. It's great. Yeah. It still just makes me want to party. <laughs> like people are like, I want to do homework. And I'm like, have you partied on it? Because when I take it, I'm like, we need a party. Yeah. Like we need to go to a blondish show and I need to hear some techno. It depends on the setting that you're in. Because mm -hmm. like nursing school, I used to take it Sunday morning, lock in, I'll be in the library, dark room, all black, <laughs> like well, a private room situation, lock in for mm. eight hours. Really? That's the only way I was able to. And you nice, enjoyed right? what you were consuming? Like you had a, a thirst mean, for the it, knowledge? Or? I just needed to. But that was the only way I taught myself because in class, it was just like, I'm not paying attention to this shit. Yeah, I'm checking out. So it's like that, the day before, the Sunday before each test, that's when I learned everything. Fire. 
Every, and it worked. Every test was like between 88 and 90. <laughs> so yeah. then let's do it. Let's do one one day a week. Everybody, news gets one day a week. <laughs> and then we get on the Adderall and then we do one day a week. And then we have six other days to do, so, you know, whatever we want. It's too much to understand each story. <laughs> it's too much. Bro. It's too much. No, no, I'm this telling is, you. This is, so this is why there's no news organization. This is why there's no news org. There's not one news organization out there that tells you the truth. Everyone is filtered through an opinion, right? Mm. CNN is this, <coughs> Fox is that, Daily Wire is this, uh, The Atlantic is that, The Guardian. Everybody has their filter, right? The New York Times, that they have their filter, and you have to. Because to do the research, to tell people the truth every day Jeez. on a topic, impossible. <laughs> it's not humanly Possible, bro. Experts okay. every week go on right, Rogan. Right, every week they go on Rogan. Experts that have dedicated their lives, and the same week another expert is like, "That's bullshit." I, I feel the exact opposite. <laughs> yeah, I feel true. the exact opposite of everything you just said. He's a World War II expert. There's another World War II expert from the other side that believes in 100% certainty mm -hmm. he is right. <laughs> Rat beef. <laughs> Listen to it. Maybe we just need to tend to our gardens, dude. What does that mean? Just take care of your house. Just to tend to your garden, bro. You Listen, know? that's take easy to say when you grew up with a garden. We have yeah. an apartment <laughs> where, where there's a Dominican that's fucking banging pots and pans yeah. all fucking yeah. night long. Maybe tend to, tend to your yeah. stoop. Yeah. Yeah. That is why Dominicans yeah. go outside. Clap with the pigeons the outside. <laughs> say what? Do they call it uh, pigeon clapping yes, outside? Yes, let's play like with that. pigeons. Yeah. You have to distract yourself. Yeah. We need distraction. Yeah. This is healthy. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second. 420 is almost here. And for the third consecutive year, Diet Smoke is back with an unbeatable offer. You see, Diet Smoke has sold over 10 million, that's right, 10 million edibles across the U.S. for a reason with options from 10 milligrams to 200 milligrams. They promise you'll find your new favorite gummy. Now, here's how it works. You go to dietsmoke.com to shop. You place your order, and in 48 hours, you have award-winning gummies directly at your door. Sounds brilliant. Plus... Exclusively for flagrant listeners, you use the code flagrant420 at checkout and you're going to get 25% off your entire order and they're going to add a free gift to your shipment. But wait, and if you're new to Diet Smoke and you're not sure what you want, they got you covered as well. They couldn't have made it easier. Go to dietsmoke.com slash free, make a selection, and all you got to do is pay a couple dollars for shipping. You got to be 21 uh, or older to purchase. You got to enjoy this responsibly and happy 420 from us and Diet Smoke. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second. Uh, this is incredibly important. Let's face it. After a night out with drinks, we don't bounce back the next day like we used to, especially at my age, I'm 40 years old. Even a night of responsible drinking after shows can potentially ruin the next day. I miss out on the next day, I'm recovering. I can't work out, I can't play paddle, I can't do some writing. It's not good, but luckily there is now a surefire way to wake up feeling fresh after a night of drinking. I know it seems impossible, but that is not the case with Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics is the world's first genetically engineered pre-alcohol probiotic. So when you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not the dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics is a probiotic drink that produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. So just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night so it's already in your stomach ready to break down that byproduct, okay? Remember, you're drinking responsibly and you're gonna feel your best the next day. Okay, I'm telling you guys, vacations, weddings, birthdays, reunions, whatever the occasion, get the most out of your spring plans by stocking up on pre-alcohol right now. Go to zbiotics.com slash flagrant to get 15% off your first order. When you use the code flagrant at checkout, zbiotics is back with 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Think about that, that's confidence. To me, that's confidence right there. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash flagrant to use the the code flagrant at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this episode and our good times. Now let's get back to the show. I've been actually following Rick Ross. Rick Ross is really good at beef. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's really, I'm impressed. Like, I didn't even listen to the song. I like tried to listen to it. I didn't, I, it kind of sucked I, or yeah. it was good. I didn't even know it didn't, it didn't, but he is on that ass nonstop, yeah, yeah. incessantly. And it's like, 
there, he's almost Eminem'd it where like, you can't say anything about, like calling him fat, he's like, I know I'm fat. I have my shirt off all the time. I have yeah. my fucking tits out everywhere. Like yeah. there's nothing you can really say. Pears, I eat <laughs> pear. He's made fun of his diet. He's made fun of everything about him, but he's really good at like creating like monikers and names. Yeah. Like he's fucking efficient at beef. Yeah. yeah. And the beef ain't even with him. <laughs> did like did Drake mention him that Drake much? Drake did mention him. Did, yeah. Not much, but it was just they have an issue with women. Like I think there's a lot of pillow talking that's been going on, and that's because what does pillow talking mean? Like if two guys slept with the same girl, and now this girl goes and tells the other guy stuff that you guys spoke about. I don't know if this is on Patreon, but do you remember when I we had this conversation when I was like, "Yo, the same thousand girls yeah. are getting fucked by everybody." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it on public episode? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is the cause of all this beef. Yeah. yeah. So thank them bitches. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe to OnlyFans. All the joy you're getting is from these OnlyFans bitches that every dude is fucking, and they're all upset about it. The fragility of the ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's pillow talk going on. So there's um one of Rick Ross's exes. Man, imagine Rick Ross laying on your girl. She all warm when you get there. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, like a toilet seat. <laughs> like, she, she, she's in a slanket or whatever that shit is. What was that thing that you could walk around in all day? Snug. 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 There's a yeah. Like it also, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But like a few months back, Rick Ross was one of his exes, and she was just she's going crazy online, like trying to air him out just because they had a bad breakup. Okay. And she was saying that, oh, Ross doesn't even like Drake. He talks shit about him. And we thought she was just bullshitting. But it turns out that was all true. Because you can tell Ross has been waiting for this. He's been wanting Son, to go out. He is hungry. Bro. Yeah, yeah. He's he nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? He he's always, always hungry. Yeah. But he's not. It's like every single post on Instagram. Yeah. And then Drake got to kind of respond to it because Ross isn't a peon. Ross is one of the biggest names in music. Yeah. And somehow he beat the CO charges. Yeah, yeah. Like... He took a play out of 50's book because both of them, when they, when they're beefing, they're relentless. They're yeah. relentless. That's what I was going to say. It's reminiscent of 50 yeah. where it's just every social media post is so funny. Oh comes through it. But what makes him good? What do you feel like he's doing that's like a He is having fun. Yes. Mm. He is smiling. Mm. He's so silly. He's a cartoon. He should be like a villain in The Incredibles. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? He's just out there and he has these beautiful fucking veneers and every post he's smiling. <laughs> and you can't not look at him. He's yeah. got face tattoos. His chest is out. He's silly no matter what he does. He's performing at a prom. Most people would be embarrassed to do that yeah. during a beef. He wears a Drake shirt and leans in. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a plywood floor. Yeah. Drake tries to take a shot and it doesn't, he has like an invincibility to him. Because he doesn't care. I'm not affected by anything. Bro. So his response when Drake dropped the diss, he's just laughing on IG stories. Yeah. He's laughing in the <laughs> studio. And then two hours later, he was Yeah. Talking. And nobody cares about the song. He didn't yeah. even need to put out a song. Well, the song wasn't, the, the th stuff that stuck was at the end of the song when he just talked. Talking. Yeah. Those were the shots. The song didn't have shots, really. I don't even bars. remember. I, I just remember now when he's going, he just keeps calling him white, white boy. boy. So that shit is hilarious. <laughs> it's funny. So it's the simplicity. You yeah. BBL Drake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got a fake nose. His nose looks, looks like the same. The same. I, I don't yeah. think he got a fake nose. Yeah. But saying it. It's hysterical. Yeah, and now I'm questioning. <laughs> now you're like, did he get a fake nose? Yeah. Now I'm like, can I? If you look at it, <laughs> where do you get these fake noses at? How do you take off this amount of time for recovery? I mean, said he, he got fake abs. That's why you're wearing that shit on tour. He's making fun of Drake's body. Which is hysterical. So <laughs> funny. The idea that he would talk about physique. He said, you got 25% body fat, but you still got sculpted ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> BBL Drake yeah. is crazy. Unbelievable. So he's he's fantastic at making these monikers. And now he's he's almost, he's got this like gravitational pull, right? And now the beef seems less with Kendrick, even though that's what we want. We yes, want the man. bars for Kendrick. The Kendrick bars feels like it's gonna bail out Drake from this Rick Ross smoke. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm, possibly. Because Maybe I that's... don't think Kendrick can do this daily Instagram no. taunting no. the way Rick Ross can. No. I think no. Pe Kendrick is like, he's got his easel and he's got his oil paints. And he's trying to make his beautiful painting. He's yeah. trying to Bob Ross it. Mm. But the Rick Ross, that's <laughs> Bob. Yeah. You don't want to wake up on Sorry. Instagram to mention every day. He's Gallagher and Drake is the watermelon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Relentless. Every show. Bang, bang. And he actually caused Drake's probably only misstep of the weekend because he puts out a screenshot of the text that he sent his mom. Yeah. Because his mom was like, oh, I'm here and you got a no job. I think it was a doctor text. I don't think it's actually his mom. Yo, but mom, text me this. Yeah. And but I'm going to respond. Even 
even so, it was so corny. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, mom, he's racist and he's um, he's on some- Monjaro. Monjaro, some shit like yeah. that. Yeah. He's grumpy and shit. But I'm like, you try and play the race card, you're half white, half black. Yeah. And you're calling this guy racist. Like, yeah. and you're saying it to your mom. It was just such the corniest play. Yeah. But the diss track towards everybody, I give him that. That was good. Yo. That was good. To Drake, this track saying, went crazy. Anybody who's I didn't catch that, it at first. Cool. My first listen, I didn't hear. I didn't know what he was saying. I was like, I, I thought it was all gonna be about Kendrick, mm. and I didn't realize he got to go at everybody. Yeah. So I was like disappointed. I was like, I thought it'd be more bars for Kendrick. You're calling him short. I get called short all the time. It's not that bad. <laughs> but then when I caught all the shit he was saying, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, you went, you went, he went. Yeah. Yo, that shit was flames. The Metro one is the, is the best diss to me. Which one? That's some Rick Ross type yeah. shit. Which one? Shut up and make your drums. <laughs> Yo, yeah. son. Because for Metro, why to are you respond, involved in this? The Met yeah. For Metro to respond, he's got to do exactly what Drake said. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that's so annoying. Yeah, and it was like <laughs> it was also Rick Ross. It's not go make a beat. It's just make drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. So dismissive. Yeah, yeah. she was belittling, bro. I was offended yeah. for him. Was down the hard <laughs> slide. Yeah, but the bars were crazy. I yeah. mean, there was a lot of. Uh, you know, double entendres, triple entendres. Yeah. They're like, once it, the internet started explaining, mm. I was like, oh, this is fire. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. drop of giving 50 shit is great. I That's knew what that was coming from immediately, but then to find out it had to do with the record deal. Yeah, the TDE yeah. thing. So, so he's, um, he, to get out of his deal, I believe he had to either sell. He is Kendrick. He's Kendrick, yeah. yeah. So it's like um, Top Dog, the guy who he used to be signed to. That's to get, TD Entertainment, Top Dog Entertainment. To get out of it, he had to, I believe, either sell 50% of his, his catalog or give him like 50% of future earning something. It's oh like my. they, that's why Drake wants him to release the contract because there's a big like rumor that he's owes top mm. like 50 percent. didn't they have him in a 360 before that basically yeah but everybody's in. I, I think when you start crazy. out mm. when you start out you get in a 360 yeah, yeah. and you're just so hungry for the opportunity you'll take whatever deal is there because you think a deal is going to make your career it's kind of like to what russ was saying yeah. and then when you start making money you learn a little bit more about the industry you learn a little bit more how it works you're like okay how can i kind of buy my freedom mm. but you locked up in these deals and the way that it works is like it's not for you to be free yeah yeah. If we're signing 20 people and one of them might pop and you got to pay for all 20. Mm -hmm. Here's my one pushback with that part. Isn't that what everybody says happened to Drake? That's what Push keeps saying. The M's count different when baby divides the pie. Mm -hmm. You signed oh, one everybody was eating off the Drake. You signed three N-words. So that's kind of the same, like, how much of your money are you keeping in music? As I mean, apparently Drake dialogue. was keeping none. Yeah, yeah. That's right. my that was the case, but now Drake's out of his deal. So. And I think that's the argument with the Kendrick situation yeah. is that he might have had to give up half to a get future? out. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. But like I the Swifties line, like, yo, make a song with Taylor Swift because you have to for the money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Drop and give me 50. Like, that's what his label's saying. Yeah. Drop yeah, an album, yeah, give me 50. Yeah. I mean, it's just like really clever. So yeah. there's, there's one part that I don't hear people talking about that it's oh, I love probably it. the most disrespectful. This is part. where, I, okay, this I'm glad fun. you're talking about so, this. This is wild. <laughs> so when he says, uh, he calls out um, Kendrick's wife, Whitney. And he's like, oh, um, yeah. And it was like a play on Tondra with like Whitney Houston and- Yeah, Bodyguard. Bodyguard song. But people used to refer to J, fuck, God damn J-Rock. J-Rock as Kendrick's bodyguard, his muscle. And there was a rumor that Whitney slept with J-Rock. Whitney meaning Kendrick's wife. Yes. Ooh, that's diabolical. Yeah. So that line, if one of is true, even if it's not true, that's- Crazy. Can we also and say no one's talking about it? And can that. we also say one thing? The whole reason he went on the shop and was like, I didn't respond to push because I didn't want to be so filthy. Yeah. He did the J. Cole. I sleep better. No, I didn't have to do that. We gotta look at that differently now and be like, Well, he has responded to push though. No, he said he wrote a song after Push did story of But Addie since Dunn, then he's responded to Push. But he said I had a song. No, no, we know what he said. What I'm saying is since then he has had plenty of bars for Push. Yeah, but, that's, but not that's like, different. Not like in that's, the heat of the battle. And it's like he said he didn't want to go that personal. And now you uh, went now. Uh, so it's like he was like, I could have been filthy, but I I don't want to have to do that. Yeah, say the real thing, which is like you're just inflating this guy that you're so far beyond when you do with push, but with Kendrick, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Kendrick is worth this more. With push, it's like, like, you know, with all due respect, where the fuck is push now? It's over. Mm. So it's like, and Drake is on top of the world again after taking the L in their yeah. little beef. If he just kept beefing with this guy, you're just gonna keep putting air in his lungs. 
Whereas not talking about him is going to silence him. Mm. Also, I think Push is like legit sociopathic. Like Push is like, I'll go, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll go yeah, wherever. No, no, no. 100%, 100%. And Drake was like, Nothing. I can't beat that. So, so knowing that he's going to go wherever and the only thing that keeps the air in his sails is you. Yeah. Make the boat stall. Exactly. Mm. Like you, you, don't, you could take the risk with Kendrick. Kendrick, it makes sense. Yeah. Because by beating him, now you're undisputed number one. Nobody could be like, hey, Kendrick is actually better. He's more of an artist. Drake is McDonald's. Kendrick is Carbone, whatever. But nobody ever compared Drake to Pusha. Yeah. Yeah. No one will ever compare Drake to Pusha. We just need to acknowledge that that was some white shit to do. White girl. You hate Drake so much. (laughs) Y'all gas it. It's so funny. Who's your favorite rapper? White boy now. This is the. (laughs) (laughs) No, embrace it, Drake. You are white. (laughs) What's wrong with being white? Why is why is that an insult? I'm just yeah. saying, I, yeah, it's a- I sleep better. <laughs> eh, you lost. That's fine. Just acknowledge you lost. That's cool. This, you are clearly winning right now. I also, as much as I'll hate on Drake, I will admit it and be like, yo, he's probably going to go down as the greatest ever. He's not necessarily for me. Probably going to go down as the greatest ever. And I think he's going to win this battle. Yeah. So I give credit. So tell us some more shit. We ruined, we partially ruined this beef because on the Patreon episode when we... Um, show the public about this AI music stuff. Now and everybody now, thinks everything's AI. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so there was so a track. Yeah. yeah. So there was multiple versions of the Drake song that came out. I think what happened is, so he just laid down the, uh, his lyrics and then sent it around to a couple of producers to try to put a beat over it. That's what I think, because there's a version out now that it's just his vocals with no music on it. So the fact that somebody can get a hold of that, most likely he sent that out to a few people. And so the first version that came out, or the first version that I got, where it was like, um, it was a biggie sample on it, Get Money. And I actually like that version the best, even though he's not really rhyming on the beat too well. That's why people thought it was AI, because he's not really hitting mm-hmm. the beat the mm-hmm. way that he would hit the beat. And yeah. it, was, it wasn't a mixed, finished song, it was a leak. And so then I feel that he was rushed to put that second version out, because that first thing didn't sound too great. So but I don't think he really wanted to drop the way that it it was released. Okay, so th- wait, Rush to put out the second thing, meaning? Uh, yeah, the, so now the second version of that diss track, yeah. I still don't think he wanted to. He wants Kendrick to drop first. He wanted Kendrick to drop. He's been telling everybody, yo, tell Kendrick to drop, I'm ready. He posted that shit, posted his manager. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it's like, this is the thing, the leak got out, so now it's forced his hand, he had to put this out. Yeah. Now there's a Kendrick leak that, came out yesterday. Is it real or AI? If from the internet, most people are saying it's AI. I don't, I haven't heard AI that good. To sound like the person do different inflections in tone. Yeah. Like it, the bars are kind of dope. Like it's That's hard. the thing that's interesting about this is that like you could, if it flops, you say, no, nah, that's AI. Yeah. Yeah. If it's fire, you go, yeah. that was us. Yeah. 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 Or if it flops, you apologize and take it off your album. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, J. Cole might win in all this, bro. Everyone's gonna, everyone's gonna go at each other. Everyone's shit is gonna get leaked. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, this person had a ghostwriter for this, da-da-da. And then J. Cole's gonna be the only person sitting there unscathed. Yo, th- that's true. Somebody came, I think Drake posted or somebody posted that there was a reference track that came out for one of Kendrick's songs. Then yeah. did yeah. that guy get exposed as a fraud? Mm, that's debatable. Uh, so what was debatable. that story? Um, so that I forgot the name of the rapper, but uh and he's only he only used like maybe two or three bars from that reference track. Most most of the time, like a reference track, if they use the entire song, then it's like, oh, that's ghostwriting. But if somebody sends a reference track, like, hey, here's an idea of how you can flow on the beat, and here's what I would say on the song. And if you take a little thing here and there, as long as you give them a writing credit on it, usually that's fine. Got it. But that guy wasn't credited on that song, and he did use like maybe one or two lines from it. Interesting. So but then the question is, so did he just take it and then rap over it like after the song came out to make it look like it was a reference track. That's what I thought. I mean, they could that... make it look like you have a writer yeah. by basically after you put out your song, re-rapping, including some bars and then putting it out and going, oh, this is the reference track that yeah. was released. Yeah. Same with the Yachty Drake reference track that got leaked. Yes. Wait, what was that one? So there was a reference track for Jumbotron, Jumbotron shit. Yeah, oh, they... is that why Rick Ross is That's like, why he was Yachty's, saying Yachty's the, the pen? pen. Yeah. So they're saying that Yachty basically put down all, of, all the bars for that track and then that reference track came out. But then some people are like, wait, is this AI of Yachty doing the song. Uh, yeah. And so it's like, no one knows. Because you can find any cartoon character Hold doing on. a rap of any song. Hold on. You know what I mean? Does AI make this beef better then? No, no because 
the fact that there's so much mystery that everything is shrouded in creates more conversation. And that's what we really want out of this. We don't want definitive answers. We want to debate. We want to go back and forth. We want to say this person, but no, this bar is actually this. Hey, this guy's going to come back. Oh, what we heard is there's a track out there that's so crazy. We want all the conversation because it fills up our day. If it's just headshot done, we're bored again. True. But at the same time, it takes like it takes the win out of the sales if you're debating if the song is real. Yeah, I agree. With that you. is but true. But it does force artists to perform. So like now instead of dropping a diss track, you might have to drop a diss music video, or you have to be like, yo, I'm actually just gonna wrap it on camera so people know this is from me and this is what I'm saying. Yo. Or you just drop it on your social page. And yeah, like, yeah. And you, crazy. you can promote it. I'm but. going live. Yeah, and that's the weird part about this. So Drake has never officially said that song is me. Because when that first came out, people were saying it's AI. He hasn't, he's like been DMing people saying like, oh, what's up, where's Kendrick at? But he hasn't officially said, hey, I'm putting this song out. It's not on any streaming service. And so I'm like, is it AI? And people, <laughs> because <laughs> it's getting good reception, he's not <laughs> denying it. Yo, here's, here's the question I got. <laughs> that would be crazy That's, AI to have all those, to your point about Kendrick, all those references, I just, no. I can't see AI going triple entendre with shit. And, and inside info, that's actually the, and apparently It doesn't Maul, have to be AI in that way. Like it could be someone else wrote it and then yeah. they use Well, Maul also, I think before the song came out, said dropping Give Me 50 on the pod. By the way, Maul was being so funny. I was listening to him talking about J. Cole. Mm. Unbelievable. Shouts to Maul and Rory. But anyway, he said dropping Give Me 50 before this song. Oh dropped. yeah, they, they, so they, it's like, they heard something. Yeah, so yeah. he heard something and it must've been. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this is AI. And yeah. this is coming from the only guy who will say anything that would make it about Drake. Or maybe they the made world. the AI track. Ooh. <laughs> oh, 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 you gotta oh, catch talk, up. You gotta catch up, bro. Shit, you gotta catch up, bro. Shit. Yo, shit. how do I get featured in one of these diss tracks? I'm trying to get sampled. Do you have any advice on how to... Because I'm actually... I really want to get a sample. In one oh, yeah, that was fine. Yeah, Congratulations. Oh, yeah. that was sick, dude. That was sick. I want to get sampled, that bro. That was fine. Drake is the greatest rapper ever. Ever, ever, ever. Sample that. <laughs> Metro Boomin is the greatest producer ever. Boom. Add that if you want to. <laughs> Rick Ross is the greatest rapper ever. And so if any of these guys want to use that at this track, just go ahead. Put it in there. Well, Charlamagne just had like a lot of reasoning behind what he yeah, said. Yeah, I know. You just <laughs> echoed the last word of your sentence. I agree. Yeah, that's what you got to do. That works. That works. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's fire. I, no, I killed that. I killed that. I ain't gonna lie. No, Strong agreement, dude. I killed that. Strong agreement. That was nice. <laughs> That was really good. Bro, my phone started blowing up. That, that was crazy. Shit <laughs> I was like, I thought I was on out. <laughs> so you almost were. You oh, didn't agree. I know. Yo, I if, you agree, if you agree, if you agree, you would have been on that album. Later yo. today, we do Brilliant Idiots. You yep, got it. Yep. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. it's yep. gonna be, just make sense. It's going to be Black yeah. Church, bro. Bro. <laughs> Keep going. Talk church. about it. That shit was so fire. Charlamagne <laughs> had this great monologue, but it was just totally overshadowed by my agreeing. That's what everybody <laughs> You're was not saying on the internet. In that it's way. really what everybody was saying on the internet. Everybody was like, yo, Charlamagne had all these really interesting, thoughtful points, but when you just went, I agree, and then, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. I agree, the second inflection uh, on the I right, agree, right. oh my God. That with, can't with be the AI. Beat, we with can't the beat. Oh yeah, Metro, they said, I don't know if this is true, but the rumor is that Metro isolated my vocals and then really increased the inflection on the I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, mm, you good, mm. you get it. No, 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 you get it. No, 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 that was good. No, 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 you gonna make it no, next time. No. You gonna make it. Wait, but did they credit you on the song? I am on it, yeah. You, you are? You yeah, 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 yeah. About to my say. pseudonym, my pseudonym. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I have a ghostwriting pseudonym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not credited, that's a ghostwriting. No, no. Oh! Oh! <laughs> say Metro got a ghostwriter. Yeah. You. That's crazy, bro. That's wild. Yeah, that's fire. Anyway, so yeah, to be involved in the beef, like it's, you know, it's a very tricky situation. You were kind of doing a Kid Cudi impression, actually. What was I doing? You were humming a little bit. I am. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. No, you no, don't, no, no. Don't Future's Kid Cudi me. Mm -hmm. Don't Kid Cudi me. <laughs> Yo, Yo, you're fighting Cudi. <laughs> Yo, if that Kendrick track is not AI, he's not built for this. If that's him, if you your wife gets called out in a song and then your response is that, yeah. you're, it's over. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Drake had so many fucking bars and it was so well done. Do you think these guys are constantly writing things for their adversaries? Ooh. And then like just keeping they a should. note. TMZ obituary shit? What is that? Like where they write up the obituary of the person before they die, and then when they die, they just release the thing first? I didn't know that they do that. You never heard that? No. no. Ah, that's like, I thought, yeah. Like they'll write like the obituary, like this person died, they had a great life, this is who they are, da da da. Yeah. And they have it for all the celebrities. 
And then once they die, they're able to just be like, this date, boom, be the first one released. But do they update it? Like- well, they'll just be like their life, everything that they've done up until that point. Yeah, but sometimes same. later in life, Harvey Weinstein gets called out for some <laughs> shit and it changes the fucking obituary. Yeah, he's a dead guy. Dude, don't bring that up. Come on, bro. You're not gonna I mean, you're going to bring that up. Or you're just gonna, not going to be I think once you make it TMZ, they start the obituary with that fact. <laughs> okay. And then they just keep it going. Until okay. Yeah. Okay. But I'm like, just saying, sometimes you need an update. Yeah. You know? yeah. But yeah. You, have, you, have the, uh, you have the nukes ready. And you have the bars ready, and then they come at you, and you're like, boom, I got it ready. Oh, what a horrible business to be in. We got to be first with death. <laughs> hey, write up an obituary for every person that's worth it. Yeah. Oh, some producer had to tell some them intern, to staff yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's an intern doing that's that. Awesome. So you're just writing about the people that you idolize and look up to dying. Angelina D- Jolie died of ovarian cancer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a it. sad fucking existence. I no, she did. can't. She got that scoop. She can't. She can't. <laughs> She did. I think she had a. Uh, she died. She had, she had a clitorectomy right? or something. What is it called? She had a mast- no, she had it's not clitorectomy. No, it's not that. Uh, she had a clitorectomy. No, she it's, not the clit- it's not the clit. Child, bro. She had a clitorectomy. It's oh. where you take away your. She take out your cervix. No, no I bro. think she had the breast removed. Right? You're talking about Somalia. She had a bre- she had breast one, and then she also had a clitorectomy. No, <laughs> she has no. Look it up right now. She went full Elliot, dude. She got the clitorectomy. She got her breast taken. She got everything. She got it all removed. We need to look this up. Yeah, I need a fact check. The breast is called a mastectomy me, and then when you get your pussy scooped out it's called a clitorectomy I'm pretty sure oh yeah, yeah it's a clitorectomy Pre- <laughs> hysterectomy clitorectomy it's close enough can't be a hysterectomy that's Herst- removal of the uterus yes it is a hysterectomy so. but it should be her- what it should be hysterectomy yeah. something like that not a hysterectomy <laughs> alright dude alright yeah, yeah. this guy dude <laughs> dude he's on there right now dude. <laughs> sample that bro we gotta put that in a song <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, what do we got what do we got what do we got but no, so they got the bars ready so when the, when the that's what I'm wondering it was just so many it was like so many good lines there was so many things yeah, put together it, like he was he's been off tall for about three weeks so and they've been building to, toward this you think yeah Him how and Kendrick long do you think it takes to write a song well we yeah. found out it was like 20 seconds with AI <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true <laughs> it's insanely fast that's true yeah I mean I don't know I thought it takes a while to like really perfect it and make it good. For Kendrick, at least, they've, they've been building, I'm sure, they've had, because they, they've been building for this beef for a decade. So you so think they, they are shit. keeping shit? I would assume. I would assume. Yeah, I think they have stuff that they plan to say in the tuck, ready to go. That's Because right, they, yeah. they're saying this Kendrick four-year-old track, and it's like, I don't think he'll release that track, but he'll take lines from it. Right. Because it has to sound dated at this point. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wild. But if this Kendrick track isn't real and he still hasn't dropped, he's looking funny in the light right now. Yeah. Because he wanted this battle. Drake replied. Yeah. What's you, the You should have dropped immediately right after. Yeah, why do you think he's not? I don't know. He it wanted is, it. That's it what's weird. He, he wanted, wanted this. Yeah, I know. From 10 years ago, he wanted yeah. it. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, maybe we, he had to retool after. Maybe the Whitney <laughs> line made him be like, fuck, I got to go. Now we got to go harder. Go harder, you think? Like, we got we to gotta take it there now. Yeah. And maybe he had that for later, and now he's adjust. I don't know. But every day that goes by, it's he's looking weaker and weaker. I don't know if they got anything on Drake if the only thing Rick Ross says is that his nose is fake. You know what I mean? Like, if that's the only thing you're saying, I'm like, all right, that's probably... Nah, something's going on because the way that all these uh, people turned on Drake, he's he did something. Like, yeah. he's fucked enough girls and pillow talk probably enough where it's like, they got a lot of shit on him or a reason to not like him. What I heard was... <laughs> what you heard? What I heard this might was... Get sample. Yeah. <laughs> this might get sent. What I, I agree. And, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. now that now mm-hmm. that I'm involved in this, you know, <laughs> I'm privy to certain information that uh, regulars like yourselves might not know. Uh, Metro hit you. But uh, no, 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 no. But what, what I say? heard is that uh, <laughs> <laughs> now that that uh, Drake and his crew apparently have been like talking, like tough guy street shit for a while. Oh yeah. When and like doing a lot of subliminals that maybe we're not even getting. Mm-hmm. So it's like really, really inside shit. Mm. And that only the other people that were involved in the lines back now. And uh, so they're like, yo, what are we doing? Like, why are you acting street? Why are you acting tough? Like, we're all mature. We're all old. We're all making money. Enough of this kind of bullshit with you guys act, trying to act tough no, and shit, sending not. the shots. That's just what I heard. That's, that's just what I heard. I mean, that has been happening. I don't, I didn't even think that was a private thing. They, Drake talks about, don't come to the sex, you know, my goons will take care of a lot of stuff. And that does actually happen. Right. So I've heard, I've heard wanna, this is true. 
Right. Yeah. There's a lot of people that just want to be in his favor, so it's like they'll snatch a chain and then right. Drake can get the chain back and now he looks like, hey, I'm big boss in this town. Yeah. But there's definitely more. This is personal. Yeah. Especially I Ross. Agree with this, this is personal. Yeah. Yeah, the Ross thing does feel... The weekend shit, this is personal. The weekend shit felt more personal than Ross. Yeah. Ross, I hear some people saying, like, this is beef that they're going to go on tour again, premeditated, mm -hmm. which, I don't know, Ross is going a little too far with that, but the weekend shit felt personal. Yeah, yeah. they've been not liking each other for a while. Because it goes back to ever since, like, I feel uh, Drake introduced the world to The Weeknd and he was supposed to sign to Drake's label. He mm. ended up not signing to his label, then blows up. So that's, a you know, Drake is looking like that at that, like, yo, I put you on and I don't get compensated. But then later on down the line, it's like, Weekend claims to be from Toronto. Drake says he's not from Toronto. Um, they moved to LA. Oh, that was in that diss track. There's some gay rumors or references, like one of the managers of uh, Weekend's label EXO. His name is Cash. He is that guy supposedly in Toronto. He spends a lot of money, and but there's some rumored stuff that you know maybe he might uh, be by. You know, mm. so mm. yeah. So they're talking there's, there's, shit. There's a, there's a lot of hmm. personal behind the scenes stuff going on, but why now? Why yeah. now? I, I mean, it's been brewing. This is like Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's this, really good. This shit that's has been fucking good. brewing for a long time. This is ten years later, and now we're finally getting our end game. Yeah, and I think yeah. people. I think once maybe Kendrick came came out and was they were like, all right, now that Kendrick is here, I'm a little more comfortable stepping out. Yeah, if it's just me. I don't know about that. But if Kendrick is there, I feel safe with it. Yeah. Hmm. But again, if that is the tra the actual uh, track that Kendrick dropped, y'all miscalculated the fuck out of mm. it. He better I, come I with agree. it. Yeah. He got to go ether. It's not strong enough. It is crazy that like this is happening right now and people are like, it's war. And <laughs> <laughs> Israel, <laughs> Iran, I'm way more invested in this. Palestine, <laughs> and people are like, there's a conflict over there. This is war. <laughs> OVO and XO are going at it. <laughs> it's war. <laughs> it's Endgame. It's Avengers. Bro. What's happening in the Middle East? They're going to figure that shit out. Yeah. We got war on our, <laughs> on our land. <laughs> <laughs> when Iran sent the drones, I said the most insensitive thing in the group chat. I was like, oh shit, Drake started World War III. <laughs> Immediately, I'm like, oh. <laughs> it is crazy though. All right, guys, we're going to take a break real quick because we're going to talk about something that you hopefully never need. But if you are injured because of the negligence of another, you deserve to be paid. Look. That sucks, that whole thing sucks, it's really hard, but if you are ever injured because of someone else's neglect, one easy thing you can do is check out Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan, we talked about, it's America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices, over 1,000 lawyers, wherever you are, they probably got you, and they've recovered over $20 billion from over 500,000 clients. That's a lot of money. So, like I said, getting injured because of someone else's neglect is hard to go through, but Luckily, submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. So if you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless you win. I'm going to repeat that because it's worth repeating. Their fee is free unless you win. So for more information, go to forthepeople.com slash flagrant or pound law, which is pound 529 from your cell phone. That is F-O-R thepeople.com slash flagrant or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Now let's get back to the show. All right, guys, we're going to take a break real quick because we got to talk to you about this bad boy right here. This is incredibly important for some of you who have a bad habit that we can't name because of YouTube rules. And instead of this high quality wooden product you see in my hand, you, you, you see maybe like a like a roll tobacco or like a, an electronic thing. Can't say the names. But anyway, you need to quit that habit. And quitting cold turkey is hard. It's fucking hard. People fail over and over again. You know what's easier than quitting that bad habit? Just replacing it with something that's not bad for you. That's where Fume comes in. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that uses flavored air instead of vapor and instead of electronics, is completely natural. And instead of the harmful chemicals that are in those other products, Fume just uses delicious flavors. You get what I'm saying. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you are free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It also has a nice weight to it. Quality, craft 
craftsmanship, and it comes with an adjustable airflow dial, which I love fidgeting with. Movable parts helps uh, if you're feeling a little anxious or you just, you know, you move a lot, you fidget a lot, this helps burn off some of that energy. Tastes fantastic, feels fantastic, looks fantastic, and they just released a magnetic stand for your fume so you don't lose it around the house anymore. You just place it on the magnetic stand. You can even spin it around on there. Again, fidget away, my friend. So, guys, we're in April. Get your shit together in 2024 with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash flagrant and getting the journey pack today. Also, Fume is giving listeners of this show 10% off when they use our code flagrant to help make starting the good habit that much easier. Again, that is tryfum.com slash flagrant. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah. What is happening over there? World Mark War three bucked off, dude. That's what all the that's what you all got. The, what, so what what exactly happened over the weekend? That's what all the news said. They're basically like, look, Iran fired a bunch of drones, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles into uh, into Israel. Okay, that was the headline. World War three is is going crazy. First time that these two nations, despite proxy wars intention, that they've actually been direct attack ever in mm. history. Wow. Okay, so that's like a big deal. So in other words, Israel's never directly attacked. Iran, Iran's never directly attacked Israel. They've both attacked their positions in other countries, i.e. Syria. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Iran maybe blew up some Israeli sites in Syria. Israel blew up, I think, the embassy or something there. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So that's the headline is like, boom, World War Three is happening. This is and why is this on. World War Three? Because these two nations, one, they're both sovereign and both they have a lot of military power. Obviously, Israel has all of America. They got nuclear weapons. Iran is working on a nuclear program. Some people believe they have nuclear weapons. Some people believe they can contract nuclear weapons through North Korea. So it's like potentially two nuclear powers going or at potentially it. nuclear powers going at it in like a hot war. Right. And they all have allies that are supposed to step in. Because right. if the boys are going to war, then mm -hmm. you got to be there for the boys. Right. That's the idea. Okay. So why is this happening? The real answer goes back fucking a thousand years. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. like the, the close answer for why it's happening right now is that on April 1st, Israel attacked an embassy in Damascus in Syria, yeah. an Iranian embassy. Got it. So it depends on how you look at it. Right. So and, Give me and, all the looks. So it's <laughs> like, depending on the perspective you want to take, which again, this is- all like right, who do we take? Is it, <laughs> who do you want to go first? <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Um, I guess you could take- you could take uh, Iran's perspective. Yeah, let's go Iran's first. Iran's perspective End is- End with the good guys. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> wait, what? What? Wait, what? <laughs> There's an embassy yeah. in, in Syria, all right? Embassies yeah, yeah. typically under international law are like sovereign soil. Like these, yeah. are, these are our nations. And if you attack an embassy, then it's you're like basically attacking, attacking the country. Nation. And there's like different kind of rules on this. Embassies have been attacked in the past, historically. Our embassy got attacked. Our embassy got Shout attacked. Shout out Hillary Clinton handled that beautifully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Israel's embassy in Argentina got attacked in the 90s from Iran. Like right. a bunch of people, it's like, this has happened before and it hasn't really been considered war, but under international law, it is. So if you attack an embassy, not a good look. So basically Iran's like, yo, you just attacked our embassy. What the fuck? We have to retaliate. And why'd they attack it? So Israel's perspective is that they basically got intelligence that there's seven high ranking IRGC, like basically Iranian government officials in one building. Mm -hmm. Now the building is technically the consulate next to the embassy. Whoa. So it's like, an annex that's rented by the, the embassy. Uh, yeah, by the embassy. So it's not. So technically, they're like it's not technically the embassy. But it's, a it's not embassy. technically the if embassy. You, you the were renting print, it. If you check the the the. It's not the war. Records. Look at the town, but technically. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. So basically, they attacked the building right next to the embassy. Yeah. Shouldn't they, have been in the consulate. <laughs> yeah. Should have stayed in the embassy. They, if I were you. They kill seven high-ranking Iranian officials. Two civilian casualties. Technically. Technically, I was like read uh, dubious reports on that. Like goes either way, but I think two civ two civilians. One of the Iranian officials that died was like a high ranking dude that allegedly, from Israeli intelligence, was an architect of the October seventh attacks. Mm -hmm. My my understanding is that maybe a couple of them were also working with the uh, go. Yeah, so a bunch of them were basically alleged to be like arms dealers and like uh, for Hezbollah. Yeah, and like basically supply chain uh, operatives for Hezbollah and Hamas. Mm. And Hezbollah, the issue is obviously the concern is up north in Lebanon where they're positioned. So if the rockets are getting fired from the drones or anything is getting fired from up north of Israel, they're like, okay, if we can cut that off. Now, I don't know if that 
does end up cutting it off, I think you can just slide another person into that position. Depends but on how, that's how valuable these people are. According to, obviously, Israel's actions, it seems like they saw these targets were high value and hard to replace. Right. And they're all in the same place at one time. So they're trying to launch like a surgical attack to neutralize these seven high value targets to try to stop money and weapons flowing into, flowing into Hezbollah in, in Lebanon and also getting retaliation for what some people believe was an architect for October 7th. So that's why Israel did it. Okay. So now Iran's like, okay, you just attacked our embassy. We can't look pussy and be like, all right, you just killed our guys. So now Iran's in a tricky position, right? They get attacked and they're like, okay, if we launch a full-fledged war with Israel... America comes in. America's getting now involved. Now we're at war with America. We're, like, it's, this is a huge problem. But if we do nothing... Then everybody thinks we pussy. Exactly. Mm. So Can't have the world thinking we pussy because we got these huge oil reserves. Yeah. And if oh, once the, valid, they yeah. start thinking that we pussy, we're not going to defend ourselves, then all of a sudden these oil reserves ain't going to be Iranian anymore. They're going to be whoever really wants it. So they all link up. Ayatollah's in there. They're all talking. Do we do a diss track? Do we do, what do we, like, what's yeah. the move, right? Yeah. So they basically are like, all right, we're going to launch a bunch of drones. We're going to launch the easiest things to get shot down ever. And we're going to do a press conference <laughs> 72 hours before. Yeah. So we're going to do this press conference and we're going to be like, hey, and again, even this is dis is disputed whether you're on like the left or right within Iran and, and Israel. Yeah. So like people on the right in Israel would be like, no, this was an aggravated attack. They were trying to kill civilians and they're declaring war, a direct war, not a proxy war on Israel. Right. And they're saying like, if you look at the types of missiles that were used, there's cruise missiles, there were ballistic missiles. These are like fast, like th these are hard to intercept. These are trying to kill people. Yep. If you look at kind of like the left side, they'd be like, look, they're not, really trying to kill people. They're, they're letting launching. you know. They're letting you know. They're giving It's also like launching from Iran, so it takes time to get there. Remember, Iran's not next door. Yeah. Yeah. This is a It's got to fly over Jordan. It's got to yeah. go it's got to go a long way. So, they basically hold a press conference they're like, "Hey, we're launching these things." They uh, some people think they tipped off Netanyahu, some people think they tipped off the Americans like, "Hey, these drones are coming," just so you know. They launch all of them and they don't overwhelm one specific area. They kind of launch it in like a disparate kind of attack so that it's easier to neutralize. Like if they were trying, some people are saying if they're trying to like hit something specific, they would overwhelm one specific area that yeah, the Iron Dome sense. couldn't try to neutralize. So, And the way the Iron Dome essentially functions is sends its own missile up and hits the target in the air, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you launch it all in one specific area, maybe those You different, can overwhelm the system. Exactly. So that something would go through. Again, this is a potential take. Obviously, yeah. if you're there in Israel, you're seeing these missiles launch, you, it looks pretty fucking hot. It looks pretty real to you, Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? Looks like something's going to mm -hmm. land. Did anything land? So 99% of the missiles were intercepted. Okay. The missiles and drones. I'm using that word interchangeably. 99% were intercepted. Some did land. And one, there were no casualties. One, like, young girl was injured. Got but it. I think she's in a stable condition. I think so, there was some damage to a military base. Or military something. base, like an air base in one of the deserts. I've heard the name of it was also damaged, yeah. but no casualties. Mm. And so it's like, and then Iran, it seems like, based off their press release, which came out on Twitter, which is just like so funny to me that like countries are like communicating yeah. through Twitter. They did like all caps, like, America, stay out of it. <laughs> like, yeah, who's yeah, in control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is my dad on Twitter? Like, yeah. he the one tweeting this? But basically, they're saying we're completely happy with this attack. Like, this is exactly what we wanted. This is concluded, and uh, we're moving on. And we're moving on. Like, yeah. everyone shut up. And so it seems like they were happy with ninety nine percent interception, and that no one got injured, mm -hmm. which indicates to me that Iran didn't really want to hit a bunch of targets and didn't want they're to They're trying to puff their chest. They're trying to save face. We just can't people. look pussy. That's we it. can't look pussy, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody died, so you got no reason to come back to us. We yeah. look like we got our get back. Yeah. You don't really need to get back. Mm -hmm. We made you spend a lot of money. money. I think because there, there's another component to this, which is the financial side. Which, I don't which know is wild. Doing. So they shot, and now they're saying no beef? They're saying, hey, we got our get back. Like, you killed our guys so they and Jay you attacked Cole, our embassy. Right? They Jay called it. They really Jay called it. Well, they just went straight. Well, they, they were just like, look, we're, we're even. It's a wash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They did. Yeah, they did, Jay Cole. But they didn't go, we're sorry for doing that. Jay Cole was like, I should have never yeah, done yeah. this on my character. Oh, okay. They were like, we got you back, didn't yeah. we? And didn't they shoot it seems at like the building with the, the Red Heifer building? They, there were missiles intercepted over it, but yeah. it doesn't look like they were directly targeting it. Oh. But I don't know exactly what the targets were. Because yeah. they, too, believe in the Dome of the Rock. Like, yeah. This is, a you know, so obviously that, a historic site for them. And But that's why I'm like, why would they shoot? It they seems would. like they're like, hey, hey, we 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 went back at you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Now, so it's like, you know, this wasn't. Yeah. And Iran, it doesn't seem like wants a direct. <laughs> what like, what'd you just like, say? Like, so? like you see, I'm, I was winking at Al. I was like, oh, we got you back. If you don't see the wink, then yeah. you just I, don't I just, understand. I that just girl. heard Hakash have a stroke. I was like, what the fuck is happening? He said, hey, hey, you. 
We get back here. Okay. But yeah. it doesn't seem like Iran wants like a direct aggravated like world war with Israel and America. It seems like they want to retaliate as a show of force. Their economy is not doing good and the Ayatollah doesn't have a ton of support from the public, right. from the Iranian people. Yeah. So he's not like in a position to be like, all right, we're in, doing a ground invasion. Yeah. So now we're in a position where Israel, and it seems like Netanyahu can actually use this as leverage. Like Netanyahu is kind of like, yo, we're not, we don't hate this idea of some type of direct conflict with Iran. It's from the analysts that I've listened to, the yeah. stuff that I've read. Because he's now able to use this to deflect from what's happening in Gaza. Yeah. Mm. And the second biggest, and maybe the biggest enemy to Israel that's not Hamas is Western media yeah. and like the perception of the West. Yeah. So now he's able to be like, dude, we're getting attacked from this major nation that has potentially nuclear warheads. Like, we like well, look at us. We're fucking getting rinsed over here. We got to do something. Yeah. And so they can get potentially more money. They can get more support from the West. And now you have more politicians like, yo, we got to we got to back them up. And the West has sympathy for Gaza. Mm -hmm. It does not have sympathy for Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It does not have sympathy for the, the leadership that constantly say death to America or death yeah. to the West. Yeah. So it is going to be very hard to justify supporting Iran over Israel mm -hmm. in this situation. So even if there are people who in America who do not like Israel, they dislike Iran more. Mm. And your enemy of your enemy is your friend. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is. it, it then, could be. Yeah. And then Yahoo can potentially delay elections, too, so we can kind of preserve power that's, a little that's bit. That's what he needs to do, I think. Because I think he October 6th, 7th, Seven. he used as kind of like, hey, this is good PR for us. We're going to run with this. And then that kind of faded. Mm. And then the West mainly seems like they've switched and been like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Mm. And now that same thing could apply here. But at a certain point, people will start to be like, guys, they sent that there. That was a bullshit attack. You're just using, you know what I mean? Like yeah. over time, the PR war doesn't last. Yeah. This yeah. thing only lasts for a moment in time. Yeah. Yeah. The sympathy but didn't you have. said he's going to get his get back oh, like, yeah. in a strong way? That's, that's what he said. He said, we're going to retaliate. And America basically said, we're not going to participate in the retaliation. Mm. So they were like, we're, you, it's up to you, whatever you're going to do. But it seems like America's trying to tell them like, yo, chill. Yeah. And so it depends on if they want to escalate. It seems like- It Iran doesn't really matter if America participates in the, in the retaliation. It matters if America defends Israel from what Iran will do next. Mm, which right, they these, probably will. Okay, so if then they have carte blanche to do whatever the fuck yeah. they want. Yeah. The all right, like, which is the argument. So it's like, yeah, go on, do your thing, do whatever you want, as long as Daddy is here to bail you out when shit hits the fucking fan. But that's basically their bluff to say, will America defend us like they have? So like, even in this attack, the money is interesting that you brought up. So yeah, it seems like Iran shot. I forget how many, like a couple hundred like drones, ballistic missiles. Some people put the total of like six to ten million dollars for that attack. Yeah, and then the missile defense. The from Iron, Iron Dome. Dome. But the majority of the missiles, it seems like from what I've read, were shot down from American fighter jets. It was, yeah, because the Houthis, I think, also launched some, and I think uh, the Hezbollah also launched at the same time. Right. So it's American fighter jets. There's, I believe, Jordanian. Jordan. And then some people allege Saudi Arabia, but it's not positive whether or not Saudi Arabia I think did. Egypt, too. Yeah. But there was other countries that were supportive of this. And it makes sense. If the missiles are flying over your country, you don't want to take any risks. They neutralize stuff in their airspace. Yeah. And it's also interesting for... Uh, Iran to basically say, oh, which countries are going to yeah. shoot down our shit? So they get to kind of test like, oh, huh. we're, we're, we're waging some type of hot war. Which countries are letting it happen and which ones are going to shoot down our And missiles? I don't know if they can get this data, but it would be quite interesting that they're learning where all the anti-missile defense it's systems are. Hmm. So not just the Iron Dome. Hmm. They learned where their missiles can get shot down from Egypt, from Jordan, yeah. from any other place in the pathway. Mm -hmm. And they I don't know if that data can, if that data is present. I don't know if there's some way where like the drones themselves can see a missile coming and from where it was shot, but they would have the locations. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that changes routing, but that could be valuable data for them for a war in the future. Yeah, I'm sure they're pulling intelligence. But, but the, it seems the like money. The, the defense, again, the attack was like six to 10 mil. The defense, again, depending on which source, uh, was like 1.6 billion. Oh, Jesus fuck. Christ. So it's, it's super a, expensive. So it's a money game. And that's the thing about war. It's like war is a money game yeah. as well. We think once we get into war, that shit is just free. Yeah. Right? But you need to pay for each bullet. You mm -hmm. need to pay for each bomb. You need to pay for each drone. And I think that was what happened with the war, the proxy war in Afghanistan between the US and Russia, where basically we armed, I think, Afghani soldiers with these like anti helicopter <laughs> missiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah they were like that you could use from the ground. You just throw it up oh, on your wow. shoulder. So 
a, a helicopter costs uh -huh. millions of dollars. One of these missiles costs thousands. Yeah. Eventually, Russia's like, this is too expensive. Yeah. I, we can't have our helicopter shot down every single fucking time with these thousand dollar missiles. Yeah. yeah. So there is a version where it's a war of financial attrition. Yeah. But why such the big difference? Why? I, I, I also got the numbers as estimates. It wasn't yeah. like officially released. Uh -huh. So there might not be, it might not be those exact numbers, but it's a really, really disparate I can also see amount. blindly sending a, a weapon yeah. as opposed to intercepting that weapon at an exact point in time and making sure they collide, that just takes a lot more technology. You see what I'm yeah. saying? The cost of shooting cost a gun versus if you had a gun that you could shoot that then would hit the bullet of the gun coming at you. Yeah, but I've, that system is already in place. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's money to keep maintaining it, but still it's like the cost really is just the missile that went up to defend it. Mm -hmm. Or to not, like shoot it down. I understand what you're saying. It's the intelligence, and the intelligence you pay for once, and then you mm -hmm. just have to put that intelligence into yeah. whatever missile it is. I understand what he's coming from, but let's just let's just assume right now that it is more expensive for some reason. Mm -hmm. There is that financial liability. Yeah. That Jordan, Israel, America, maybe Saudi, maybe Egypt have to take on, and how much longer will they take it on? Mm. That's the question. Mm. Yeah. Could it also be a shot to Israel? Like, look, you're gonna shoot all these down. But it's gonna be expensive. If you're gonna try to kill our people, just know that that shit is gonna cost you. Like Israel specifically, don't do this again because it's not worth it financially for you mm. to kill our people. No, no, it's the other way expensive. Israel had to pay 1.6 billion, right? Yes. So Iran could be saying to Israel, look, don't, if you kill our people, yeah. we're gonna make you spend a lot of money. We might not uh, go to war with you, uh, but you're gonna spend a lot of fucking I money and it won't you. be worth it. I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's a version of it. I mean, you only have so much money for a military budget. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, what do we think happens? So, now we wait basically for Israel to retaliate. And do you think they will? Because it seems like the US is like, yo, chill the fuck out. It depends when. So, people are even speculating like, with Passover, like, would they try to instigate that and then potentially face further escalation during Passover. Mm. Like when how, is Passover? I think it starts in like now or in like a week or a couple of days. Like it's like about to happen. Okay. Um, 22nd to April 30th. Yeah, so like a week. So basically it's like, and these things move kind of slow. So like this thing happened the first and then the retaliation was the 14th. So like there's a two week span. So it's like they have time, whether or not they do it in the window, it might be like a month later. So I think with uh, Soleimani, when U.S. neutralized him, the Iranian leader, they retaliated like a month later on like a base, which again, didn't, I don't think killed anyone or like it just like hit the, hit the base, but they gave some warning, mm -hmm. which again, it's just like a show of force. Like, hey, you attack our guy, we're coming back at you. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a matter of, of waiting. And then if they basically try to climb the escalation ladder, America might have to get involved. There might be like a plea. It's so crazy listening to these like analysts. Yeah. Like they have like, the people that are profiting directly from war yeah. on the TV channels. Yeah. And they're like, what do you think we should do about this? And right. they're like, we need to nuke Iran. Yeah, like, yeah. What is going on? Dude? Yeah. This is crazy. But like a lot of them are like, yeah, we need to like- Take any, out their nuclear program. Every day that's happening yeah. that we're not neutralizing nuclear power in Iran, like it's just waiting for a nuclear attack from them. Yeah. And it's like, and then people are claiming like, oh, we need to do this and we need this defense because it's preventing a larger war. Yeah. Like imagine all these missiles all of a sudden hit Israel is there retaliation like five times more? Is it yeah. way greater? And now we're in a full on nuclear war? Like, so is America's protection preventing this nuclear war? Mm. Yeah. It depends. These are the war games we play. I'm not built for war, bro. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Just that statement. Oh, we need to nuke them. Like, all the people that would die when that shit happens. It's yeah. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. want to hit the nuclear facility. They're like, yeah, we got to like, take this out. Like, I, it's it's wild. I can't have that on my jacket. Yeah. Let's, let's say, for example, Iran does get nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. right? And I know that they've flexed and said that they were going to use it. Mm -hmm. If they're not even willing to escalate past this mm -hmm. in the current conflict that they have with Israel, what evidence is there to say that they will once they have nukes? Knowing full well that if they fire one, Israel's firing one yeah. immediately. It's mm -hmm. mutually assured destruction. That is how the Cold War so I don't. Yeah, I don't really understand the logic behind it. I mean, I guess depending on what, pers what perspective you would take, and I'm kind of guessing here, is that you look at is like Iran's proxies and you're like, oh, they're agitating in the region. Like the last six months specifically, Hamas and Hezbollah have been like sending direct attacks at Israel. Yeah. So Israel's like, oh, they're trying to get rid of us. They're trying to uh, eradicate. So they might not do it 
as themselves, but they might equip Hamas, they might equip Hezbollah. And they and they have been, it seems like, and so they've already right. been engaging in this proxy war with us. God. So it. even though we're not in a declared war, That's actually we're in war right now. That's actually, yeah. so Iran might not do it as themselves. They might, uh, you know, deny any connection whatsoever, but they have the capability of not only funding, but arming a proxy that absolutely would. And Israel can't take that risk. So it's these soft power plays where it's like, mm. okay, it's Hamas versus Israel, but it's also kind of like America versus Iran. Yeah. And if they want to get involved in their alliances. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, man. Mm-mm-mm. So Mm-mm. that's why I think people like the Drake, uh, J. Cole thing. Yo, yeah, so much easier. Yeah, yeah, can I, yeah. can I just that's, say that's something about this? Like I, I was, <laughs> the, no, 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 no. I, I, I mean, this. it's like, we've said this before. It's like, um, We've been so critical of the government, the elites, the managerial class, the powers that be. It's like, they give us little drama to fight over, like racism and sexism. And it's like, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, How true. much better that's is true. that that's true. than what the fuck is going on in the Middle East? Yeah. Like, it is so much better for us to talk about how horrible racism and sexism is, is and be like, we gotta figure this out, we gotta fix this shit, than figure out thousands of years of fucking history. <laughs> yeah. Half of it is mythology. Red heifers are getting sent to the fucking Middle East, people are going to come back from the dead, Dome of the Rock is going to be exploded or not, who knows what the fuck is going on, I want to talk about Drake and Rick Ross yeah. I want to talk about Drake's nose yeah. it, it is, and the fact that we are spitting in their faces, the people in charge that have given us this kind <laughs> Yo, loving just... distraction UFC 300, Yeah, we got a so salute crazy. that yeah. was awesome, yeah that was crazy fucking we awesome, in, we were in uh, where were we, Charlotte? Yeah. Saturday. we were in Charlotte, and we were able to watch it in the green room, and uh, it was, yeah, that Max Gaethje fight was fucking insane. Unbelievable. Beast, bro. Unbelievable. Yeah. I remember him doing that the first time. The let's bang in the middle of the ring. He did that yeah. against, uh, what's the name? I forget. But I remember watching it being like, yo, that's so far. Yo, yeah, Kevin told me that was going to happen because yeah. Max is winning the whole fight. And then Kevin was like, yo, at the last like 20 seconds, Max is going to do this shit where he's like, let's come in the center of the ring and oh, let's just swing on each other. He, it's like a thing he does. Like, oh. let's just go for it these last 20. He just invites the guy to the yeah. center of the ring. He won, I think every round maybe he lost one. Yeah. But to do that when you're winning against a guy with crazy knockout power, which apparently Gaethje has, yeah. I'm obviously casual. But to see him do that and then deliver, yeah. unfucking believable calls him into the center of the ring. They start banging. And knocks, his, knocks Gaethje out clean with two seconds left. Yeah. Gets fight of the night and knockout of the night. Makes $600,000. So far. Unbelievable, dude. Yeah. Unbelievable. We were going nuts. Just to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was just crazy. Just crazy to see. Yeah. I mean, Max was a huge underdog in yeah. this fight. Like, he's coming up in weight to meet Gaethje. And Gaethje is, I don't think, a small 155. No, he looks big. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it was unbelievable. And it's tough because it's one of the things, like, you start to meet these guys yes. and hang out with them. And, you you know, they're really sweet guys. So yeah. it's hard to root for one of them in there. So you're kind of rooting for the best fight. But the best fight often hurts both of them the most. Yeah. It just, oh, yeah, yeah, it was crazy. But yeah. Max is just such a fucking stud. And now here's this example. Of, like, he loses the three fights to uh, Volk. Uh, you think his career is going downhill. Retirement might be coming up. All of a sudden, he gets a couple big wins. Yeah. And this one right here, now he's on top of the fucking world. Yeah. I wonder if he does it to win fight of the nights. Wow. Like, like I wonder if that's like his strategy. Like, or, or maybe I think just, he's like, just a Hawaiian who likes the bank. He loves I the bank. I think I think he's just a Hawaiian who loves to fuck. Because I was looking, bank. he's won like seven fight of the nights. So here's the thing not that he said. He's like, I knew Justin would have given me that opportunity, so I gave it to him. What that means to awesome. me is. He knows he's winning the fight. Yeah, he mm. And he's like, Justin would have given me the opportunity yeah. to get get it back, to go all in and get it back with 10 seconds left. Lose all the hard work get you already put out there. Exactly. So I gave him the opportunity. So he knew he was that far ahead, and he still was willing to take that risk and give him that opportunity. So cool. Hey, yeah, yeah. He also has confidence in his chin. I think that's the big yeah. thing with Max, yeah. where he's just like, I know I could take a shot, but if I land... And there's another thing with Max, like, Yes, he, he he knocked out Korean Zombie with a big overhand right, but Max has never been known for one-punch power mm-hmm. and has gotten these two like really big knockouts recently. Now he's coming up and waiting. It looks like he did it right this time. Yeah. When he came up and waited and fought Dustin, he didn't do it right. Yeah. This, he looks like he actually trained. Like He he looked like he filled out. Like His stature mm-hmm. looked more muscular. Yeah. Maybe he has more power at this weight. Maybe. I mean, so cool. I mean, 
So now, I mean, the world is his. He could go back down and fight Ilya. He could maybe fight Islam at 155. Like, he could do whatever the fuck he wants. And he's one of these guys who the people love. Like, he's yeah. such an endearing fighter. Yes. That the next fight is going to be pay-per-view. It's going to be for a belt. And it's going to be for crazy money. And he's going to fucking cash in. And what if he wins back the belt one more time? Uh, oh, my God. I, I wonder if it almost looks better for Gaethje, too. Because, like, if you lose a decision... I feel like that looks one way, but losing in like just a like a, a just a banging like ending, yeah. I feel like looks better. Man, I mean, it shows that you want to engage. I, like, I think we'll always watch Justin fight no matter what. He's just such like an engaging fighter. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the thing with Justin, I think Max brought this up, is like Justin didn't need to take this fight. Yeah. So Justin was in line probably to get a title shot. Mm -hmm. He's taking this fight, which is all risk and no reward. If he beats Max, everybody goes, well, yeah, you should have beat Max. You weigh more than him. Yeah. Like, your career's you're Max more of an upside. Yeah. Exactly. So he has everything to lose, still takes it because he's that much of a gamer, and then he goes out in devastating fashion. But, yeah, I don't think that he's hurt. Like, I think anytime he's willing to fight again, we're showing up. Yeah. He just might not get, well, he definitely is not getting the belt. Mm -hmm. He's not getting the shot for the belt now. Mm -hmm. Can't get the shot for the belt off of L. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it was cool that Max acknowledged that too. That was like the first thing, yeah, to, the post fight. Yo, basically. Max is the fucking he's awesome. He said this shit about the Ilya Taporia guy, like they're like Ilya was kind of looking the other way after the knockout. And then Max, initially, if you're Max, like a reporter's asking that question, they're trying to get a good sound bite out of you. Max knee jerk goes, Well, I mean, I don't know who he is, like maybe he's socially awkward, he doesn't know how to behave <laughs> in that moment. Like, he had this really like empathic reaction yeah the, you, you just knocked the guy out you got all the fucking adrenaline going through your system it's easy to go fuck that guy i'm gonna take him out instead he goes well maybe he didn't know what to do with himself in that moment like, yeah so what a beautiful thing to say it's awesome yeah it's fire right yeah like and a thoughtful thing to say yeah. you are the guy like and also think of it if you're Ilya, you just watch the guy that now you have to fight brutally knock someone out that was bigger than you by 10 pounds yeah and box beautifully throughout the round, throughout the five rounds. Of course, you're not going awesome. Let's go. It. You're thinking. You're like, how do I take this guy so out? How do I beat him? Like, yeah. and you know the camera's gonna be on you anyway. Max is a fucking man. Yeah. That, and hopefully, JC, uh, Justin, you know, rests up and 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 he's good. You know, shout out to Justin as you well. You know, man. what was also him. fire is uh, Henry Cejudo and Kelvin Gastelum came to the shows. Yeah, in Tempe. yeah, yeah. yeah. First of all, they're both fucking awesome guys. Shouts to you guys. But what was also cool, I had to miss the last fight of the night, the uh, Pereira fight. Mm -hmm. And then they went and watched my set, then we all get off. And then I just hear them analyzing. What were they saying? What was their takes on? Well, they said something that was interesting about Pereira. I'm just like, this guy scares the fuck out of me. I'm so glad Izzy doesn't want to fight him again. We love Izzy. He's terrifying. And then Henry is like, he also is really good at picking his fights. He is fucking great, but he also picked very intelligently. And he has like a uh, kind of like a mentor-mentee relationship with Kelvin a little bit. Okay. Where he's like, Kelvin, because Kelvin seems like he'll just fight anybody. I don't give a fuck. Mm. And he's like, Kelvin, look what Pereira did. He went at the big dogs, got title shots early, got guys that matched up with his style. He was very intelligent in how he picked his fights. And that's not to say he's not awesome. He's fucking awesome. But he also did it very intelligently. Mm. And I just thought that was a take where I'm such a casual. I'm looking at this guy like, oh, well, that's just God in a ring. <laughs> I think what he Kelvin cannot be touched. trying to say is that like he picked fights with guys that are known for their striking. Yes. And... Poetan's strength is his striking. He's coming from kickboxing. Yeah. He doesn't have a big jujitsu background. Yes. It's wrestling. He doesn't have it all. So what he's probably saying is if he was in there with a traditional wrestler... Yeah, it wouldn't be as good of a match. Maybe it, it wouldn't be great. Mm. Um, but that being said, he came into the UFC and the UFC, I'm sure, brought him in for one reason. Mm -hmm. There's one guy on the planet that brutally knocked out their superstar yeah. named... Israel Adesanya. Yeah. And that man is Botan. Yeah. So they're like, if we get this guy in and we feed him a couple guys that he can knock out, we can build up this big fight and boom, we're going to make tons of money. And it worked. And then they had another one and it worked perfectly. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, I don't think, as much him picking his fights. I think it was the UFC knowing we want yeah. Izzy mm. to fight this guy because that's what everybody wants. Yeah. And then after that, the other people that have been the champs or the people in line have been strikers. Yeah. Like the fact that Jamal Hill wanted to strike with him. I mean, yeah. it shows Jamal's confidence in his striking, but yeah. shit. The next person that gets in there with them is going for the fucking legs. Mm -hmm. And before the fight, uh, we, were, we went to lunch and then we we're asking him about Jamal Hill's chances and Henry was like, no. 
Pereira is not. Pereira is different. I mean, the first striker. punch he he, he throws, <laughs> yeah. it concuss him. Um, it was yeah. great. Unbelievable. And to get... Yeah, I like the... Like yeah, what, what, what was <laughs> that? The Kabi Lane, bro. What is that? The the TikTok dude. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Italian kid who like do some shit and then show how you should do it easier. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. That's funny Italian? you call him Italian. It's yeah. The He's black the kid with little Italian. teeth. No, the black kid with He's little teeth. The most clearly teeth. Italian. Guy yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like adorable. Italian. That was the most so adorable <laughs> woke nice. shit I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, in my He's so Italian. Listen, he's probably never been to Africa. You could call him the African kid, and everybody knows who the fuck you're talking about. That guy's Italian. I don't even see. Why is he African? Sicilian, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sicilian. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it was just fucking crazy that fight. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, so I missed. I just saw the highlights. He got tapped in the nuts, and then the ref was gonna do something. And he was just like chill. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. knocked the motherfucker out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, that's insane. Yeah, that's like Thanos type shit. Like, let how, him have fun. How yeah. many fights has yeah. he had so far, Pereira? Like, in the UFC? Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's not that so many. many kickboxing, but in, in the UFC, not that many. And he's, I, I forget what it was, but I think it was like seven, eight fights, and he's knocked out, or he's beaten five belt holders. Yeah. It's like crazy. Like, yeah. Strickland, Izzy, like, yeah. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, like, I, he beat Strickland before he was a champ, but sure. it's unprecedented. Yeah. Right. Now, the UFC's killing it, and they just announced the McGregor fight. Oh, yeah. Like, McGregor Chandler, so that's going to be wild. That's in June. Like, I mean, yeah, they're just killing it. They just keep on doing it. They, they have a great roster of fighters that, that, and they've conditioned a style, which is, it rewards brutality. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. The fighters know if they go in there and perform, they make more money. Where boxing, it, they go, if I just win, I'll get more money. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, boxing matches don't have even close to the brutality because they have been rewarded for victory. Mm-hmm. Whereas UFC is, even if you lose, if you lose in an exciting way, that's the fight of the night shit. Like yeah. Yeah. that is, they should keep that for every but card. The, like, it's so smart. Like that. Yeah. That's the thing with UFC. It's more than just like, okay, yeah, we we established this business and then we fucking put on some shows. It's the way you've curated a culture of fighting, and the way that you've curated an expectation for your fighters and your fans. Because now, if if the fighters go out there and fight an awesome fight, like for example, Aljamain went out there and he fought a uh, Cater. Right. That was awesome too. Yeah. yeah. So shout out. he fought, yo, shout out. He he fought an awesome technical fight, dominated K, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like at one point, suplex up there. Yeah. Or DDT, it was, was, crazy. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. But it wasn't as engaging and exciting as the UFC fans are used to, mm-hmm. right? And he even acknowledged it. I think Dana like defended him. But he goes in there knowing it. And he's like, and he's in a tricky situation where he's like, this is how I know I can beat these guys. But if I want to make the most money, I'm going to have to take more risk and probably change certain aspects of my style Mm -hmm. or just do DDTs not stop Mm -hmm. because he knows the culture of the UFC Mm -hmm. and what the fans want and that's important boxing did not have that yeah boxing was all right, I'm going to stick and move. I love boxing so I like it but I'm going to stick and move not get touched and then win the belt and then somebody got to try and get the belt for me yeah and since there was nothing else for us to watch in terms of fight sports that we cared about we just paid for it every single time now there is so you better be fucking exciting yeah. Now we're watching Gervonta because yeah. Gervonta is knocking your fucking head off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's another path. Like, if, if you're not like, oh, I'm not the most technical guy, I'm like a journeyman fighter, Bro. but I can put on a show. It's like, yeah, you can make an amazing career. I mean, I, I love Floyd, right? Floyd is my favorite ever. I think he's the greatest boxer ever. I think he's the greatest great ever. I don't know if Floyd is even close to as big if he is around at this time. He'd be as successful without a doubt. Or maybe he would change his style. But knowing, the fans knowing, they could go watch UFC and watch carnage and brutality and knockouts and blood. I don't know if they're signing up to watch him perfectly defend and outpoint his opponent. I don't know if he would be as big. He would be as dominant without a doubt. There's not even a question. I wonder if he would change his style and take more risk specifically to compete with what was going on in the UFC. Possibly, Mm. but I just think he the lead up to the fights and the marketing and the branding. He's fantastic. He sold a story where it's like, oh, I want to see this guy lose. Yeah. No, no, you're <laughs> right. Like, no, you're, He got in our hearts. He played the emotions. Yeah. Like this Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney fight, like yeah. we're going to watch it. I'm looking forward to this. We're going to watch it. He and, and Ryan deserves 90% of the money for this fight. <laughs> I don't know if Devin said anything the entire time. <laughs> He's just there. Yeah. I, Devin could be like, I'm not fighting. This is with all due respect. Devin go, I'm not fighting. And Ryan go, okay, I'm fighting... Margot Robbie. 
Way the, the same <laughs> amount of people, if way, not more, are showing up to way, watch that fight. He's yeah, carrying yeah. this promotion yeah, on his yeah. fucking back. <laughs> yeah. Devin should be thanking him every day in the DM. They're facing off each other, talking shit, cursing him. Who are you cursing at? <laughs> that man's getting you paid. No, no. He's going to pay for your kids, your kids, kids, your kids. They're going to make crazy money on this fight because Ryan convinced everybody he's fucking crazy. Yeah, what is it? Do you think it's an act? What Whatever you, it is, Devin's getting paid. Devin should be showing up and shaking hands, giving him a hug, asking him if he needs any bipolar medication, <laughs> Bro. and then replacing it with placebo so Ryan keeps on doing what he's doing. Get <laughs> so, out the way and let the man cook. This motherfucker is nuts. Nah, he going for it. <laughs> he going for it. Of course, bro, he saw a fucking humiliation ritual. He saw a fucking... Yeah, he was in Bohemian Grove. <laughs> yeah. Are you being nuts too if you saw kids get sacrificed? Yeah. Yeah. That was like the most that. arrogant part is you think you're famous enough for all that? Like, you're going to show you the humiliation ritual? Come yeah, on. Yeah, they tied him You're not that big. <laughs> yeah, they went, yeah, they went out to Victorville, California. Yeah. <laughs> they scooped you up and they're like, this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, he's fucking promoting this fight. He's saying all that dumb shit. And I think that he's smart enough to know. I think he's an internet kid. He grew up with it. He understands it. He understands the, the touch points. And uh, he's just, I'm going to let it rip. I, that's me personally. Mm. Mm. And good for him. Yeah, and I actually hope it's that because I don't want to be the other. sounds like Kanye off the bench. Yeah, this sounds yeah. like a guy who's spiraling <laughs> yeah. and it's probably some mental health yeah. stuff to me. Yeah, and listen, that, I, I just hope it's not that. Yeah, well, Kanye also is a great promoter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. two things can be true. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, Ryan hasn't gone anti-Semitic yet, I don't think. So that's how you know. That's yeah, the next yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, once they yeah. go. That's yeah, the next yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once they go anti Semitic, you're like, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's real now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's real, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real. It is real. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, UFC 300 was fucking crazy. It was wild. Awesome. Amazing card. Just an amazing card. Yeah, it was just, they did it. They keep doing it every single time. I'm curious about this Chandler and McGregor fight. Dude, the way he announced it, I, I saw the clip of, of Dana announcing it. He, like, gets a piece of paper while he's in the news conference. He's like, wow, I've never had this happened before. I don't know what this is. Mm. And then he reads it and he goes, oh, all right. Uh, I guess this is a good time to announce it or whatever. And then he does the announcement, but just great. What, what did the audience do when he said that? It was a press conference. So there were some little murmurs, but it wasn't like an audience. It was like the press conference. And it was just to get a piece of paper and be like, oh, what is this? I've never had this happen. I'm sure he knew what was going to happen. Oh, I'm sure okay. it's his idea. Also, But to yeah. be like, oh, what's this interrupting my press conference? Mm. Yeah, yeah. F fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be crazy. All right, what else we got going on? You, uh, I would need to see this, had dinner next to Larry David. Oh, yeah, oh, Mark and I had crazy dinner next to Larry David. Hey, I need to know about this. This is insane. Mark, tell us. So we're just sitting there. This is the craziest thing. So I walk into the restaurant, and they were like, okay, where do you guys want to sit? And I was like, they tried to put us at a table, two chairs. And I was like, oh, is there any way we can sit like a booth? I like a booth. You know what I mean? It's a nice, like, stretch. Larry out. likes a booth? I, I had no idea. I didn't even think about him liking a booth <laughs> yeah. when I made the decision. I was just like... This is fine. Can we move over here? And they were like, that booth is taken, but the booth right next to that booth is wide open. So I was like, all right, bet. I'm sitting there, little corner booth, hanging out, having a great time, eating food. Schultz comes, sits down next to me. We're just chit-chatting. And in the middle of him talking... This is in LA? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the middle of a sentence, he's just like, so anyway, yeah, I think one of the things that honestly, holy shit, that's Larry David. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes he does this, though, where we'll be hanging out, and he'll just be like, oh my God, is that Dana White? And it'll just be a bald guy or something. Like, he'll just yeah, like, yeah. be like, oh, that's... Oh, Alex is here? And it's just yeah. a black guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he just never, he'll just be like, oh, that's someone. So I was like, oh, hilarious. There's going to be an old guy over here. So I look over and I was like, holy shit, that's Larry David. And then they, the person brings him over, like the maitre d's, like walking him and just walking directly at our table, hits a right and he's sitting as far away as me and Andrew right now. Oh, mm. fuck. He's yeah. just yeah. at the, just sitting there with his daughter, just, just enjoying it. You guys listening to, I wouldn't talk the whole dinner. I would just listen to Larry David talk. It was hard. It was yeah, hard, it was, felt like there was some personal stuff going, uh, so like, I, you know, I just kind of checked out. I didn't even say hello or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it felt like there was some personal stuff going on. Mm. If it was just like daughter, a boring yeah. lunch date, I would have definitely on the way out be like, yeah. hey, man, thank you so much. Love your work. Yeah, he's with his daughter. I wanted to cause a problem. I wanted to be like, my food is cold. Don't, isn't that annoying? Right, Larry? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the agree? moment to see <laughs> if he's really about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, what should I do with my cold food? Should I send it back? And if he's just like, no, nah, just eat it, man. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, what? you fucking... Fraud? What yeah. the hell? Yeah. This has all been an act? But no, it was like so crazy. I was so nervous. Yeah, and then yeah. your boy, uh, Alex, the, the, oh, yeah. he came down. Yeah, yeah. Alex comes by. And Barbara Alex. Sits, yeah, Barbara Alex comes by and he sits down and he's literally looking at Larry David the entire time. <laughs> and we keep looking at him being like, bro, isn't this crazy? He's like, bro, it's wild, right? <laughs> 
He had no clue it was Larry <laughs> David. I, knew, I, knew I was like, how crazy know. is that? We're sitting next to Larry David. And he goes, that was Larry David? <laughs> <laughs> Where? <laughs> He's sitting in the seat that's directly across from him. No clue. We were asking, we were like, what did you think we were talking about when we were saying it was crazy? It's like, just the food we thought. thought, thought <laughs> so it was, food was so good. <laughs> it was wild, dude. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Nah, shit was crazy. Listen, guys, well, obviously we solved abortion. We, uh, we solved everything. Uh, but... Uh, there's many more things to solve, mm -hmm. and uh, we we'll be doing this? them on Patreon. Yeah, and uh, we I got some see. OJ heat. I gotta tell you all. Oh, oh hell, yeah. hell yeah! You got the real conspiracy? We figured out he's innocent. And he might be the greatest father of all time. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a fun one. We'll see you there. Peace.